Everybody, welcome back to the Film Buds podcast. This is episode number one hundred and seven, and my name is Henry. I'm Chloe, and today we are going to be talking about Martin Scorsese's new epic, my man, <laughs> gangster movie on Netflix now called <laughs> The Irishman. Yeah, and then we're going to be doing a retro review of another. Recent CGI ga- mob movie. Yeah, of another gangster <laughs> film recently that has utilized digital technology, which is Legend from 2015 starring Tom Hardy. Why is it called Legend? I don't know. There's two of them. I don't know. Shouldn't it be called Legends? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get to it. There's a local gay bar called Legends here. That's right. Shout out. All the, all the uh, drag queens from RuPaul's Drag Race go there. Oh, yeah? Not like to hang out, like like to tour. Right. Yeah. And oh, but yeah, it's uh, it uses uh, digital technology to because he plays both of these twins, these mobster twins, and so yeah. it, sometimes within the same scene, quote unquote. And so that would be a fun little movie to talk about. And then I wish that they made that movie with Chris Evans and his twin brother. Hmm. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, Chloe, should we touch on that Leonardo DiCaprio news? Maybe. Just maybe. We'll, we'll, I'm fearing we'll, we'll, Taylor we'll... Swift comes for him. Now this imbecile. <laughs> yeah. He only won because he got stabbed. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then we also, from a, a lovely listener, Kim, who sent us a question Kim. on Music Buds, Last time, she also sent us a twenty questions she mashup. The bomb. Yeah, she sent us yeah twenty questions for us, ten each, plus a bonus apparently. <gasps> and so we'll get to that as well. Other things we watched, all that usual stuff. So thank you so much again for joining us once again. Couple things, I guess, in case you missed housekeeping. I hate it when people say that housekeeping. Little housekeeping. Little housekeeping. <laughs> So if you haven't yet, check out the Kristen Stewart bonus show at thefilmbuds.bandcamp.com for just $1 minimum. Whoa. Minimum? I mean, if you haven't downloaded it yet, you're sleeping. You can get it for somebody for uh, the holidays. Yeah, why not? It's a great gift. Yeah. I don't know how you would facilitate that, but I believe in you. You could do it. For yourself. And then probably at some point soon, a new Music Buds as well. But that's, you know, we're still trying to figure out the scheduling for that. Well, Chloe, how you doing? Good. We saw each, each well, other last night. Yeah. Very recent. Whoa. Yeah. Some might say too recent. Perhaps. Whoa. Yeah. Yes. I actually uh, got Henry to leave the house, so that was cool. It's true. It's rarity. Yeah. Rarity, fairity. That's what people say because they never see you. Cause That's you're my nickname. In the house. <laughs> <laughs> High school. <laughs> Um, yes, it was fun. We hung out with friends to the show. Allie? Uh-huh. And Kaylee? Uh-huh. Still trying to get Allie on the show, but we've had Kaylee on before. Yeah. Allie's, uh, has she called into the show? She was on the phone very, very briefly, I think. Kaylee said, that was it. Kaylee said at a party when she was a little, uh, frosty toasty, right. she gave, she wrote down a question for you to ask me on here. And oh, then said yeah. not to tell me it was from her. I think I I will have to do some digging to find that. I think <laughs> I, I think it's in my email. I, I I remember her saying that. I need to check it out though. So she couldn't remember what it was. Yeah, which I, isn't I, too I surprising. don't off the top of my head. So I'm so curious. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was very silly. And then we saw a bonus friend to the show. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so crazy. <laughs> Small world, yeah. So we, we had Kaylee and I play this as we've talked about on the show prior. 
Kaylee and I play a game where we like see people we know in public. And should I go over the rules again? <laughs> if you see sure. someone you know, it's one point. If you say hi to them, it's well, you have to know their name, then it's one point. If you say hi to them, if you talk to them, it's two points. If there's physical interaction, not like, you know, not like a weird way. No. Like a high five. That would be, I don't know. No, high five doesn't count. I think it has to be a hug. Okay. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Good to get ground rules. That's here. three points. Yeah, that's three yeah. points. So anyway, and so we were talking, and um, just so everyone knows, um, Allie moved away the, you know, Henry, don't be offended, okay? No, we no. Think of you like you're 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 the fourth sister in in uh little what's the movie called? Little Women. Little Women. Yeah, it's just a weird name. Thank you. <laughs> you're the <laughs> you're the one from um yeah the least famous one the one people aren't gonna know is the one from uh uh shoot what's the Amy Adams show? Sharp, Sh- Sharp objects? objects. Yeah, is she the least famous sister? I, we got Sir Show, we got Emma Watson, we got that girl. Who's the other one? I, I don't know. Dang it, Henry! I haven't. They're I, all famous. I'm not really super uh, familiar with it, so sorry about that spatula. one, everybody. Dropping it. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, we gotta look this up. Anyway, so you're the least. You're that one, okay? But you're still in there. You're included. But wow. Kaylee, Kaylee Allen, what is happening? Kaylee Allen, is it? Do you hear that? It's happening again. Nope, it's just me. It's just my brain again. Yo, it could just be my brain. I think I, th- I think we're all right. You didn't hear it? This happened last time, too. It's fine. What? I've also been having deja vu a lot. Really? It's really freaking me out. Hmm. Anyway, um, it's also giving me, like, false confidence because I'm like, oh, yeah, I know what's going you on. You know how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but anyway, sorry, sorry. So, Allie, so we're like a trio. But Allie moved away. So she hasn't seen anybody, you know, she's, she comes back every now and so again, but whatever. Okay. And so, um, we were playing the game out and Allie was like, oh, well, I'm certainly not going to win. And then, um, Kaylee and I were joking about how we tend to see the most, no, just me. I'm, I'm okay. Really, I'm sorry. Really I won't here. acknowledge it anymore. Okay. So then the person we see most often has been friend to the show Jeremy How or Jeremy Howell, just like Powell. Jeremy Powell, just like <laughs> randomly around constantly, right? And Allie's favorite thing that like if she's here for a visit, she has to go to a local bookstore. Shut up, Flyleaf. Yeah. <laughs> Great bookstore. It is, yeah. Henry had never been there either, even though he lived here his whole life. So yeah. anyway. Uh it's it's shocking. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but anyway, so we walk in to the bookstore. There's nobody else around, but basically like at the front door <laughs> is Jeremy. Is Jeremy. We all got a point. Yeah. <laughs> Which is basically like none of us getting a point, but yeah. And he said, oh, hey, Allie. Like he remembered. Which it was very. Yeah. It was a grand moment. Yeah. We talked movies for a little bit. Wow. He was going to see Knives Out. So hope he liked it. Me too. Yeah. I'm going to see it. Yeah. So that was fun. Um, that Chloe, was crazy. Anything else going on these days? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, now. Good save. I do I, I do have a, a quick story. However, I, I was thinking about saving it for Music Buds because it relates to a story I, to- I told on that show. You know, the, the, the no, story. No, you tell it on this show that till we get people to listen to both. Okay. Also, they listen to both. I mean, it's well, hopefully, <laughs> y'all listen to both. We know. Yeah. I mean, if it's it's a very loose connection. Tie, okay. But anyways, we love an Easter egg. Sorry to uh, belabor this, but uh, you know, you can just skip ahead if you. Everybody knows it's. Don't Henry will he- feel it. Probably will feel it like a horcrux. So go ah when you skip past it. So ah. if if you did hear ah. the last no no one of the last music buds episodes, I talked about my debit card flying off the roof of my car <laughs> you've had so many issues with your debit card oh and it get it gets worse wow. okay and yeah Aww. so that was a, a fun time no it's okay it's all right okay, this okay, is okay. a this is a, a good story spoiler alert okay. oh florence Pugh's the other one. Oh yeah of, the doy of, of midsummer the doa claim oh man and yeah you're definitely sharp objects then yeah so this past sunday yeah today's sunday so a week from today 
No. No. A week, a week ago. A week ago. <laughs> She's lost it, folks. Yeah. I had a very busy day at work, very tired, and I had stayed up kind of late the night before, and so I was a little sleep. Doing what? Sleep to just random things. Okay. But, and I was going to deposit my Suspicious. my check at the ATM, my, my paycheck, because I, I hadn't put it in. I didn't get a chance to on Friday, so I said, Henry, you need to have money in your account. You mm-hmm. need to do this. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so, sadly, since it was Sunday, the... The lovely bank teller who I've mentioned on the show before was not there. It was, you know, the bank mm-hmm. was closed. You actually go into the bank to deposit checks? No, but there's like a screen. I mean, there's like a, the camera where you roll up to the window and... Wow, and you're just putting a little machine and bloop, boop, boop. I, no, I'm not. No. I'm not. No, I'm not that. You're not a bloop, boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I put my, as you, as one does, I put my, my debit card into the little slot. And, you, you know, you don't just put it in and pull it out. You... It stays there until you're done with the transaction. Right. Uh-oh. And I know, cr- crazy, right? And then, so I saw this pickup truck pull up behind me. You got nervous. Got a little nervous, but, you know. Uh, Performance anxiety. I was almost done. And so anyways, finished what I was doing and pulled away. Yeah. And as you can guess, I'm sure. Abandonment. My debit card was still in yeah. the slot. Oh, boy. The ATM slot. And oh my god, this would be a good meet cute. It would be. And so, anyways, not being completely unaware of this, I pulled out onto the main street and I was heading up t- towards this main intersection. Where were you? Right in the heart of downtown. Not not in historic downtown, downtown but the heck what? Up, oh, up, up, gross downtown. Up, up, yeah, up to where the fast food oh, places big are. Yuck. And I That's was, what, that is that place is so gross. You oh, gotta yeah. understand this place is so gross. There have been like several motel fires. Like this place, <laughs> right this place is nasty. Yeah, I was pulling up there and I was deciding, okay, am I gonna just go home and rest for the the rest of the day, yeah. or am I gonna go bite the bullet and go to Walmart and go grocery shopping? We don't. Support and I was also wanting to buy Blu-ray, of course, but you know I, I was on the fence, and so I pulled up to the stoplight, and to the left of me was a turn lane, and I was just waiting there, waiting, waiting, and all of a sudden I this I saw this car pull up next to me. Was it a pull-up truck? Oh, let me get let me get to it. Okay, pickup and, truck, not pull-up and, truck. In, Sorry. Um. In the corner of my eye, all of a sudden, I saw all of this motion in the vehicle next in that vehicle, and it was like head looking in my direction. I was like, "Is this guy like a creep, or you know what's going on here? <laughs> Is he mooning me? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what was what the deal was, so I just tried to ignore, ignore it. it. Yeah, I tried to <laughs> ign- ignore it, and finally." That is funny. Yeah, and then finally, because of the painfully slow stoplight, I said, fine, I'll look. And I looked <laughs> over, and it was this guy, like maybe in his 70s. Aww. It was the truck behind me. Yeah. He had s- seen my card stuck in there. He had taken the time to drive through the traffic. Aww. And so I I saw it. He, he was like holding the card in his hands, like, hey, I got your card. Uh, I put the car in park, jumped out, ran over, across the road and no he, he, he uh, uh rolled his window down gave me his car it's like oh thank you so much and it's like oh no problem man and he had a vietnam war veteran hat on and it's like oh that's so nice of you ran back and again painfully slow stoplight still red <laughs> minutes i've been waiting oh, and wow. so got my car back but was this guy southern yeah yeah he was southern but yeah it was i mean he had to like See my car, then drive through immediately, uh, through all the traffic, get me get my attention and do all of that. So a king, yeah. So that means it just restores your faith, yeah, in humanity, yeah. So that was fun, mm-hmm. and yeah, that is pretty good. Yeah, well, it was not a creep; it was just a a, a good Samaritan, sweet old man. <laughs> you never know. Wow. So I guess I shouldn't call him old. He was pretty elderly, but no, he said he was seventy. 70s, 80s, I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I did not get a good look. Let's call him... Let's call him 82. Okay. Probably shouldn't be driving, but it's okay. He seemed pretty competent, but... Hey. Meh. Maybe he was younger then. <laughs> Maybe. But I shouldn't uh, call a seven-year-old old. 
No. No. Ken is 74. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hmm. In human years. <laughs> That's my stepdad. Yeah, we, we should <laughs> specify. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, should we jump in? We got a lot to talk about. Yeah, we got. Oh, yeah. We got like five and a half hours yeah, to talk let, about. Yeah, let's, let's jump in. Get into our first. Longest movie in like 20 years or something mm-hmm. crazy like that. Yeah, our first review, which is The Irishman. And we have a clip. Let's take a listen. You better put Pesci in the clip. Can you believe this weather, Frank? Yeah. Huh? It's 85 degrees yeah. outside. Perfect. Hey, Tony Jack. Jimmy. Jimmy. People freezing to death in New York. And look at us. Hey, John. Huh? Hey. Why we don't live here all year round is what I want to know. Oh. Beautiful. It's summer. What? It's summer. People aren't freezing to death in New York. It's summer. In my mind, it's always eight degrees in New York. I'm making a point. Making a point? Making a point dressing like that? Is that how you dress for a meeting? And this is how you dress in Florida? In a suit? For a meeting? Anywhere. Florida, Timbuktu, I dress in a suit for a meeting. And you're late. What? You're late. And it was traffic. Yeah, it's traffic. <laughs> Wasn't it traffic? You give me it traffic. It traffic. What do, you, what, what do you want from us? It was bumper to bumper. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, uh, it's bad, you know. Traffic. I never waited for anyone who was late more than 10 minutes in my life. I'd say 15. 15 is right. No, 10. Okay, so The Irishman is directed by Martin Scorsese. <laughs> and it stars Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, Harvey Keitel, Ray Romano, oh, Bobby yeah. Cannavale, Anna Paquin, Stephen Graham, Jack Houston, Jesse Plemons. Uh, and, A couple yeah. random famous people yeah. at the end, which Clubo doesn't like, but I get it. Yeah. And, Everybody just wants to work with Marty. That's what yeah. it is. And the synopsis is a mob hitman recalls his possible involvement with the slaying of Jimmy Hoffa. So again, this one is on Netflix. I guess Netflix bought the rights to it. And, no, they financed it. Or yeah, financed it. And 170 mil. Is it that high? I thought yeah. it was like, wow. Originally 100 million. Yeah. But... And so a lot of anticipation around this movie and decade in the making yeah and of course martin scorsese has been uh you know very much in the press recently just dragging marvel movies through he the mud he barely said anything I feel, like, I, I feel like every day i pop up on facebook he's said something else you it's know? not true no I, he just said something new yesterday what'd he say he's like I've seen superhero movies. It's the same thing over and over. Which, hey, he's right. Yeah, but, he is right. But enough about it. Enough about it. We get it. You don't like him. He Just because it's a new story or whatever doesn't mean he didn't say it all at the same time. No, this this was a recent interview. They should stop asking him. I think so, too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but... Uh, yeah, so... He's allowed to have his... <laughs> oh, he's allowed to have his opinion, but there's a, there's a point. Marty. He's a founding father. Yeah. Of the industry, okay? Mm-hmm. Oh, I agree. I he's, mean, he's His face is on the mountain, okay? Yeah. He can say whatever he wants. Oh, I I agree with that, but I I think come on, let's let's dial it back, you know. That's all. But anyways, Chloe, what did you think? They are all the same. <laughs> they are. <laughs> They're exactly I, the same. I don't I, I don't disagree with you. Come on. But and to be fair, to be fair, nobody except for Netflix would finance this film in part because all their money is going to like sure thing, like sure thing. Let's give the people what they want, but it's the same thing. Yeah, which like I get, but also you got to see where he's coming from at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, he's charted waters. Yeah, and now. Now people don't want to chart waters, Henry. I know they want to sit in their little little unicorn. They're drinking that their Disney little, juice. They're little, uh, you know, swan floaty and take Instagram pictures. Yeah, they just want Baby Yoda. That's all they want. 
they don't even watch the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they just want the meme. Yeah. So, well, Chloe, what did you think? Did the Irishman live up to the hype? Okay. So for starters, I tried. I didn't read like anything about it, including like I know people. What is? Give me some of the. Now that I've seen it, give me some of the, the the hypes. I mean, the quotes, what did the reviews? What was it? What they say? I mean, they're just saying it's like a a return to to the gangster epic for Scorsese, and just saying it's one of his best in years and. In years. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there was a certain thing said about it. It was just very, very highly praised. Okay. And of course, the, the whole de aging of the actors was a big thing about it as well, good and, and or bad, I, I guess. But it didn't look stupid. No, I was. I'll, I mean, I think that this is the best that it's ever been done yeah. in terms of de aging actors. So me too. I, I I really didn't notice it at all for the most part. Mm -mm. I think I, occasionally Joe Pesci, something about his look was a little off at maybe times in the beginning. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. But other than that, I Oops, I didn't notice it. Yeah. I, there's so much to talk about. Not just, I mean, first of all, there's so much movie. Mm -hmm. It's a long movie. It's three and a half hours. But I ain't mad. I'm over the people who are, all these people are saying she should have been a mini series or whatever. No. You should have some effing patience. Watch it if you want. Don't if you don't. It's on Netflix. You can pause it for goodness sake. Yeah. But don't go into it. I'm not, okay, I know I'm coming off really feisty this evening. I'm so sorry, everybody. It's fine. I came in heated, and it's not directed at any of you. I really apologize. Um, But I all I'm saying in this calmly manner <laughs> mm -hmm. is I beg of you, don't go into it reading. Like, I've seen articles that say, like, here's how to watch it as a miniseries. It's so stupid. Don't, don't, don't do that. Just wait till, like, today was, like, the nastiest day. Of all time, I just came off of this movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Fresh. Yeah. So, and today was like the nasty. It was cold and rainy and, you know, it was a really good day for it. Yeah. I got lucky. It was very foggy out v today. <gasps> yes. Yeah. Wow. It was like, it was like some very like 1600th. 16th century British murders were going on. Yeah. You know? But like, honestly, where to start? I feel like we should do this by categories. Like, don't let, I like, there's too much. I feel like we're going to have to talk about, about aspects at a time. Like, direction sure. at a time. Like sure. We're going to have to talk about the acting at a time. We're going to have to talk about structure, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. Where I'm should in. should we begin? Well, uh, Let's do the structure first. And Weird. Weird choice. That's the first thing you said. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's the last thing I said. No. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Weird. Uh, but no, st structure. <laughs> I mean, that was one of the things I noticed first. And I, I mean, it makes sense coming from Scorsese, but like the time jumps were perfectly done. Flawless. In yeah. In terms of editing and like you, I never really noticed... I mean, you notice it, it jumping, changing times. It was times, seamless but without being confusing or like jarring or jolting. Yeah, it, it, it made perfect sense in terms of where it was in the story yeah. and as well as purely from a an editing standpoint. It was very graceful and elegant. So Yeah, wow. You killed it. Ugh. And I think that it, it also, with that, it balances the three main characters very, very well yeah. in that way too. And so it throughout all three and a half hours, I never really felt like I was losing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. track of wh where we were in the story as well as we didn't lose any of the characters. Yeah. And also the things that were maybe slightly mysterious to me, it seemed like they made a point of not making that a focus point. And so I didn't really care if I was, unclear about a certain character or, or something like that and so right like he he knew what to pay attention to and to what you would be paying attention to and so he did all of that very very well yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it's i think the length now i mean i didn't absolutely love the movie i think that i don't know if it needed to be three and a half hours. I think I was never bored during it, 
But also, I think it could have been three, maybe 245, and it could have been just as good, if not better. I mean, I get, I get the idea of it being showing this this uh, lifetime of crime and, and everything, but I think that there were some things where it veered off a little bit. I was like, let's just get back to kind like of... Like what? I mean, nothing, like, it, it never indulged in something that I felt was completely superfluous. It was just, it felt a little overstuffed to me, I think. Hmm. So... I mean the and one thing is this uh it's written by Stephen yeah. Zalian who did Schindler's List, yeah. Moneyball, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo remake, uh, and many others as well. And, so, and I, I he also did The Night of that HBO mm-hmm. miniseries. So uh, the script is amazing. I mean just the dialogue and and also that goes along with the structure, also, yeah, as well. So and to make it all. It just like seems like the most cohesive. Well, again, it's like we all know it's probably because I'm so sentimental. I love a little meta moment in a movie. Like it's just all so full circle. Like the movie's supposed to be and all these people are together. Blah, blah, blah. They all work so beautifully. It's all like so syn. What's the word? Synchronous? No, that's ugly. That's not the word. Synch. Anyway. I don't know. Synergy. Yeah. That's not the word, but yeah. it's great. But like what a, what made me think about that at the moment is like because you talk about how good how good the script is but then like you have these like some of the best in improvers of like all time <laughs> improvisers oh lord i'm losing it like improvisers of like all time we got al pacino mm. robert de niro not al pacino i mean al pacino you're living your best life but i meant to say joe pesci yeah <laughs> and robert de niro who everyone knows they they made like what tie for the two best lines of all time they both improvised so. yeah sorry al pacino i'm sure you have one too yeah you know al pacino is my secret favorite we've been over this oh yeah club loves some dog day <laughs> afternoon oh yeah he's great and and wow. also and with this movie joe pesci as an old person amazing um like the best old guy honestly, ever honestly move over baby yoda like yeah he's he old was like, man joe pesci was the cutest thing i've ever seen in my life and he's the only like he's only in the, as that age for a really short time but it is amazing i, I, w- I would have watched the whole movie with him like that. that's what i was thinking too when you're Honestly. talking about how it could have been longer i was like i that just part, wanted the end that as a whole movie yeah but it's oh it's so wow. good wow it was beautiful yeah. oh my god it's a it, little bre- yeah if, if you need to learn how to play an old person go watch joe pesci in this movie it's amazing Honestly, Joe Pe- and this was like his first movie in like a while. He's at been least doing a decade. He right? did that Snickers commercial, and that's about it. A man's gotta eat, okay. Oh, hey, I love <laughs> he's he's fantastic in it. I mean, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny commercial. <laughs> but so. like, he's he's a king. Yeah, he and is. apparently he rejected the role over fifty times. Come on, it caused all kinds of ruckus. It caused oh, I, all I, kinds of wait. Should I, I give you the tea? Should it be Chloe's tea time? Uh, please. Chloe's tea party, whatever we call it. Okay. So, Henry. Mm-hmm. Now, this is kind of a surprise. Martin Scorsese is like, he's like, I don't know how to describe it well. He basically like does whatever his little babies want. Like, he doesn't, <laughs> like, Leo was like, will you please direct Wolf of Wall Street? He was like, anything for you, my sweet little baby boy. Then his older brother, Robert De Niro, was like, Marty, I finally found a project for us to follow up Casino with. This is it. Yeah. But, whoa, guess what? That was not this. Mm-hmm. This was research, the book that was based on, which was by Charles Bronson, by the way. Interesting. A little tie in there, if y'all huh. feel me. Wow. Crazy, right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that is a small world, am I right? Yeah. Tom Hardy. Okay. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Crazy. So, anyway. So, um, Robert De Niro wanted to make a movie about, like, an aged hitman. Like, basically, the end of this movie as, like, a movie. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, winter is coming. Okay. So, for research, he read the book called... um. Oh, shoot. It's what I think the movie should have been called, too. It's a much better title. 
what's it say? You paint houses, we paint houses. Yeah. That should have been the title of this movie too, okay? Because I think it fits the like vibe way more. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. The Irishman doesn't really... No. No. My mom uh, was watching part of it. She's like, so which one is the Irish one? Yeah. It's like, it's like I don't know. Robert Niro is half Irish. <laughs> yeah. But... Still. That don't do it. Yeah. No, no, no. Also, Action Bronson was in this. What the heck? Yeah. That was... <laughs> Very strange. I like him though. <laughs> I was like, I... <laughs> <laughs> that. Yeah, okay. So anyway, um so this was the book Robert De Niro was using as reference kind of before he presented it to Martin Scorsese, I guess. And then um they were talking about it and Martin Scorsese it was like a little it was like a mini therapy session, you know? He was like, Well, this sounds like you're really more kind of, you know, tied into this story. Yeah. Particularly whatever. And he's like, well, I'm just really... And he's like, well, let's just do it. Let's just do the darn thing. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're going to do it, let's do it. And, and, and so De Niro was on the phone with the executive and was like, okay, so this is what we want to do, except this is what we want to do. And the guy was like, so I, you've, we greenlit your movie and you're using that to propose a new movie in its place. <laughs> And he was like, yeah. And they were like, word. But then obviously they ended up going to Netflix. But anyway. Cause was they, that verbatim? They almost doubled their budget. <laughs> yeah. So also the movie, orig interestingly, originally, like I said, the movie was supposed to be made like nine years ago. And, I, and the thought was that they could have pulled it off without all the CGI and stuff. Also, the technology wasn't there. Yeah. They would have looked like uh, been avatars. Bad. Yeah. Would have been bad. Uh, <laughs> So, um, or little baby Chris Evans, yeah. also not great. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so you know, kind of all well ends well, in a way, because I feel like this is this is better in a lot of ways. But this is also Al Pacino. Do you like how I said that we should talk about it in segments? And I went off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's I tried. That's progress. That's our jam. <laughs> Admitting you have a, a problem is the first step, and whatever. Mm -hmm. So anyway. But um, this is the first time Al Pacino and Scorsese have worked together. Is it? I cannot think of another time they've worked together. Hmm. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Yeah, maybe so. To quote Monk. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I, I'm not sure either, actually. But, I, I mean, I think, I mean, the issue is... Not, not, I mean, it's not an issue with the movie, but, like, all, all three characters are so good, and all three lead performances are so good it's like it's hard to pick a favorite and and that's another thing with in terms of the balancing of it all i was never really i never felt like it spent too much time on one character it was just very well balanced yeah. in that sense oh wait let me get back to all the tea i'm sorry <laughs> okay so al pacino not al pacino dear lord i just love al pacino <laughs> okay sorry yeah underrated honestly yeah he is, i know he's super famous and we don't feel bad for him or whatever he's very underrated oh he's great yeah okay so anyway al pacino like i said turned it down like 50 times and these were like his best friends and he was like no i just can't i'm just no mm. <sighs> then i could see al pacino doing so, but, that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so because of that they had to re shape everything like in um like martin scorsese and robert de niro in in under the eyes that he wouldn't take part because mm -hmm. obviously he was the top choice yeah obviously he's al pacino yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that one was a joke okay um anyway so robert de niro was going to have to play Joe Pesci's character. Okay. Because Joe Pesci turned the role down so many times. Right. Okay. So, Robert, which actually would have made a lot of sense. Probably would have made the movie more boring, though. Probably. Because, like, that's a very Robert De Niro role. Mm -hmm. The very much not Joe Pesci role, which is what made him end up taking it, which he was like, okay, I just, he didn't want to be the, like, was like the butt of the joke. Yeah. In that scene. He didn't want to play, like, the, you know, small loud dog mm. if you will right well put 
Thank you. I mean, that's who I am. We all know it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so so because of that, Robert Niro's gonna have to move over there. And then they were gonna cast either Liam Neeson as the lead, hmm. or get this, Pierce Brosnan. Ooh, that would have been bad doing that. Thank God <laughs> yeah. Joe Pesci came around. Yeah. Honestly, it would have been better to get Baby Yoda in there. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Be amazing. Like that is crazy. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it it really is the perfect casting in all three roles, and I think you know who else is perfect casting. What's Sorry that? to interrupt. Anna Paquin. Yeah, I once th- now she's very good in that role. I was a little confused as to how her character is presented. I loved it. I think I'm I think I'm on the outside here. I really? think I'm I think I'm very much the minority in this one. Okay. But I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, the I think the concept of it I really liked and there were certain scenes where I really really liked it. But but we we can get to that in, yeah. in, in a minute. I think that I really really liked how Oh. We can't forget Ray Romano. Oh, he's great. Ray Romano was my life, you yeah. know. Like I grew up with him, mm-hmm. but also I just like I've talked about this before. I just love Ray Romano. Yeah. Well, I mean, one thing that I, I did really love was how Robert De Niro his rise. Like just that was so Yeah, subtle almost. It, yeah, it was very subtle and also something that Scorsese does really well. That, I mean, it, it's he's ripped off all the time for, and we'll get to that in Legend, but making this very violent, kind of trashy story yeah. presented with very clean, elegant oh, filmmaking. Yeah. And he does that really well, and he make, makes this movie really, really watchable. Like, it's a very easy watch. Oh, yeah. Like, there's plenty of humor in it, and also just the pacing. That's one of the things he's best at, I think. Yeah, and how he presents the story is very um, relatable and... Um, digestible and so and one other character that we haven't mentioned is or that one character actor is harvey Keitel. <laughs> no he's good and and also stephen graham who's in a lot of scorsese stuff who's in oh yeah boardwalk yeah, yeah. empire and he's been a bit typecast yeah. at this point like yeah. he was in public enemies and some other mob movies but he's always really interesting and he has that great british accent that like yeah classic english accent so and and so that's that's one other thing that scorsese does well is like with ray romano and just the uh, uh, is the the cast thing all across the board and and of course the soundtrack fantastic yeah you know just an, a nice classic mm-hmm. soundtrack as well and i loved the uh the um what do you call that Oh my gosh, I don't know. I'm so sorry. The um big dinner. What do you call that? Banquet. Oh yeah. That was probably my favorite. I don't even know why. I just loved it. Well, actually, that was like classic Scorsese. Yeah. Well actually, in terms of what lingered too long, that scene is what I felt could have been cut down. I felt like that hurt the pacing for me. I, I, I don't know why exactly, but I felt myself phasing out a few times during that sequence. So now, there were certain conversations during it that I enjoyed. I know. That was the... I know. I know. I know. I can't believe it. <laughs> and I, one, one thing that in terms of making the story very digestible is... Henry, focus. Digestible <laughs> is there would be these really quick moments of violence he's like hits on people that would just be like a like a single yeah shot and then it would just be be done yeah. and then it would be on to the next thing and it never felt um it was never jarring and i mean yeah. it was jarring in a in a cuz it was violent but not in a cinematic way right you know right and it was jarring when you were emotionally attached which yeah there proves c- the effectiveness cuz it, it's also cuz it's balanced that way with characters who aren't nearly as important but then you're almost surprised as to how quickly that death is handled during the movie you know so yeah but i i like how it's just like it's like well that's my day job so it's not very it's on your because scorsese can do in your face violence oh yeah and so i like his okay 
I'm just going to gush. I know, I can't help it. He's just like the master. He really is. And I know people like respect it, but also might be projecting because he's like my fave. But I also feel like people don't respect it enough. Hmm. Might be because of all this controversy might lately. Be. I don't know. Or maybe it's because it's like new generation of... Because he is like old school, I guess. Mm-hmm. But it just shows you that like he re- he's like he just is the best. And there's so many things that support that. Like, um, I love. He's always been obsessed with movies. Like he has seen every movie. Yeah, I feel like he and Tarantino like top everybody in that, right? <laughs> Probably. But like, <laughs> but I feel like of course Daisy watches them with like such wonder, like childlike, you know. We know I love him. Okay, anyway. Yeah. I mean, we basically have the same, uh, you know, eyebrows. Very similar. True. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we probably have the same inhaler prescription yeah. for our eyes. Like, we're just really on the same page. So, you know, Jews, Italians, a lot of the stereotypes are the same. So, anyway. Okay. But back to the point. What I really noticed in this movie and also, like, through the use of CGI, I just really like how he can and admire how someone who's, like, the, like I said, like, a founding father, right? He, like, has clearly taken in still movies throughout, just always, and, like, can learn from them and, like, incorporate stuff. Like, there's a little bit that looks kind of like Wes Anderson a little bit. There's a little bit, that, but, 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 but he makes it all Scorsese. Yeah. Like, he, it's clear that it it washed over him and came back out and all formed back into his new piece. And that kind of goes also with, like, he used this CGI technology, which, like, you wouldn't think would be a very Scorsese thing to do. Right, yeah. That's what was taking people by surprise, I think, so. You'd think he'd make them wear, like, printed out, like, masks of their faces, like, (laughs) you know? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I mean, it sounds pretentious but i mean the the best kind of cgi is the stuff you don't notice and in this aside from it being jarring at first just knowing what they look like in real life yeah you you don't notice it and so it it does that so well somehow i'm sure they spent an absurd amount of money on that but it it seems to paid off for them so yeah it's like three lens three lens cameras oh really all kinds of stuff yeah yeah no, inter- they had a they had a posture consultant on set, interesting. which I love. Yeah, interesting. I love. Yeah. I was thinking about it, like that must be really hard. Like they're season, like they're the best actors on the planet, mm-hmm. right? But like, if your body's aching, like that's got to be hard. Mm-hmm. It was also like an incredibly long shoot. It was like 106 days. I'm sure. Yeah, like that's crazy. Yeah, and so for like Robert De Niro to have to like change, like. Because I don't even know how many ages there were. Like, there were at least, like... Because sometimes, it apparently... That's the other good thing about movies is, like, they work it all out, but you don't have to see it all. Yeah. You know, same with, like, stories and everything. But, like, sometimes it'd be, like, a, like two years later or whatever. So, like, we didn't notice, but, like, it was there. And apparently, they all really took it in to, like, make it work with their posture, especially... um. Joe Pesci apparently took it very seriously. Yeah, well, it paid off big time. Oh my god, Luke. I know, it's so good. It's oh, so man, good. Oh, Joe Pesci. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Honestly. When he's having the, the bread the and the, bread, the, the, the wine. The bread, I know. <laughs> I said that earlier, Henry. You yeah. couldn't tell because I was squealing. But I went, the bread. Yeah. That's how you know he's good. Mm-hmm. Literally, y'all, it was not a moment. He literally just had some bread. But it was so, his Ro- acting so good. It rolling stuck the ball. out. The ball, you know, Come that's amazing. On. Yeah. And how good did that look, by the way? Oh, really good. It was fantastic. Oh, my God. Yeah. That was, like, so beautiful. I loved, he can just, like, you could just tear the, not tear this movie apart. You could just, like, like a good piece of art. I mean, it's it's a good piece. Of, like, it's just beautiful. You could look into it forever and keep finding more and more, like, beauty. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the end, like, they're approaching... They're almost in like, well, is that a spoiler? I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, it's just like thematically and also just is backed up by the, which is beautiful. I'm not making sense anymore, but you know what I mean? Yeah. If you've seen it, you might feel me. 
Yeah. I, I mean, in ter- and, and also in terms of the his connection to it, just having Scorsese having the Italian heritage, you f- he's able to make it feel kind of like palpable in terms of like presenting a world of gangsters yeah. and have it be... I mean, ha- have it always be... been a strength of his. Yeah. Like ha- familial almost. Yeah. For and lack of a better whereas word, so many other filmmakers organic. try to do that and it comes across as really goofy. Like in... It, uh, oh, Gangster Squad. Gangster Squad. Oh, that's that's a good example. <laughs> but also Black Mass. The yeah. the Scott Cooper. Oh, the worst. Just at, And he makes those characters feel well, we so... we have some news, don't we? Speaking of Black Mass, you thought last week's news... Oh, yeah. Was, you thought last week's news was bad. Yeah. Henry's about to take a tumble. Yeah. <laughs> and it's... So he, Scorsese, I mean, pur- purely from just having that heritage, he really makes that world feel authentic. Well, I think that's also just something he's... I think that just the gift he has. Mm. I think he just like... At least it comes across as though he just like feels very deeply and sincerely. Yeah. And like sweet, like so many of his movies, are, even though they're like, they tend to be like a little dark, a little violent. But yeah. they're always like sweet somehow. Like, or at least like in my favorite, The Departed. Like, of course. There's a lot of sweetness in that movie though. Mm-hmm. And that's almost what makes it more gut wrenching at times is like this. The relation, the familial sweet relationships, at least at times. Yeah. And so, yeah, he just really understands the human condition and can mm-hmm. portray it beautifully. Like, it always feels like it's being filmed at eye level. Like, you never feel like, you know, it's not being filmed from a drone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and one scene that comes to mind, speaking on that, is the, the final scene, which I loved with the nurse in the yeah. retirement home. I loved that whole sequence. And it's a perfect way to end the, that whole movie on, I wish on she such wasn't a quiet famous, note but yeah what's that i wish she wasn't famous oh yeah that really bothered me mm. i was like this lady this lady pops up in freaking everything yeah <sighs> but so and i mean now they got uh, action bronson back in there fine yeah and now <laughs> i mean in terms of just small nitpicks i will i did just watch it a few days ago however i do f- find myself struggling to remember that much from it what i like there aren't that many big standout scenes that come from that i i I don't know i don't know why now some of that might be because it was done on netflix and there were times while i was watching it where i paused it and i had to go do other things and so i really really wish i had seen this in a theater if you have a chance to see it in a theater you really should and so that's one thing is like i had i had to pause it periodically throughout the day and so that could be one reason for it, but I do find myself struggling to think of really big standout moments. Although it's consistently so good, there weren't that many big moments for me. But again, it's not not a big thing. But um, it would not be not definitely not in my top five of his. I think I still prefer his most recent three over this. I think I like I like Hugo Wolf of Wall Street and Silence more than this. Maybe Silence on the same level, but I like Wolf of Wall Street and Hugo both more. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean. I mean, and, and in terms of his gangster movies, I think Casino is my favorite still. Casino's so good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love me some like late '90s Scorsese. So. Oh yeah. That was like, for me, that was like peak. But yeah, I love it all. And this is like a love letter, and it's like the whole story, and it's like, oh, but he didn't rely on any of that. It's still like so good. Mm-hmm. Again, I really like Anna Paquin's character arc. Yeah, I I, li- I like the arc. Uh, I I just maybe I wish she'd maybe been in it a little more. I thought it was perfect. Really? Girl didn't want to be in it more. That yeah. Was the oh, point. oh, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I just love it. Was like a he like always had his his conscience was always kind of like glittering in the corner. Yeah. And it was just something he kind of chose to turn away from. Mm-hmm. I just really I like I loved all of that. Yeah. Because and then people are mad because she didn't like talk right. 
Well, that's oh. what Scorsese got criticized for, is not having a lot of female characters in his movies recently. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, I, mean, I mean, I disagree with that. That's like saying when people said Nolan didn't yeah, have emotion. Dunkirk. Didn't have emotion. Oh. Oh, what? no. Yeah, yeah. People criticized Christopher Nolan because there's no emotion in his movies, apparently. That was a criticism. The... Not because of Dunkirk, but... Well, people were mad that it didn't have... Uh... More women or people of color in Dunkirk. Yeah, which uh, I said, have you? <laughs> I understand where you're coming from, but also this thing. And they were like, "But it's it's a um, it's a uh, an artistic portrayal of events. Whatever you could have put it in." He literally got the effing plane. Yeah. Like it's <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. He made it as accurate as possible. And it's coming from, like, Soapbox Chloe would be mm. on the case, okay? Yeah. Especially in this one. Like, you can, I mean, I'll go in. I'll go in if I think there's poor representation or bad representation or no representation, whatever. This, her character was absolutely, I think it's one of the strongest parts of the movie. Hmm. She's also the she's also the one who tied the three of them together the most. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I thought it was beautiful. I thought that that was the kind of main weight of the movie, if you will. Especially like it starts with the little girl. It's not just Anna Paquin. Mm-hmm. Like this is the character growing up. Yeah, and I thought it was so strong, and the little girl is very good. Yeah. I felt that little girl yeah. thing. And um, the end was just gut-wrenching. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> you had these mixed feelings, you said, but, ah, uh, ugh. But no. So I don't understand. Like, just because she didn't have, you don't have to speak to be powerful. It's a yeah. good lesson. It is. You can, ex- <laughs> you can, what is it? What did Taylor Swift say? Something about being removed from the narrative or whatever? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, regardless, I just don't think... I think if you watch that movie... I think if you watch The Irishman, like, and don't go in with the idea, like, it's not... It does not pass the Bechtel test. Yeah. Okay. That said, it's about a bunch of people in the 19s... You know, throughout the year, but like 1960s, 70s, like real people, people with power, violent people, whatever. These these were the people. Like that's that's the way it was. I mean, and it's the same thing with Dunkirk. If you want to watch, it was the point of the movie was to present a realistic yeah. portrayal yeah. of Dunkirk. There weren't female soldiers on the yeah. beaches of Dunkirk. I think it's most impactful for movies on a whole when the most stories possible are represented. So I look forward to that being the case, and I would not want a woman's story to be told uh, with the character instead being changed and played. But I don't want to see a Ruth Bader Ginsburg movie where Andy Serkis plays Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> motion, motion capture. That'd be amazing. I couldn't think of anybody else. That'd I don't know why. That'd be good. But you take my point. <laughs> that was a very <laughs> random selection, but you take my point. Yeah. Like, it just... Yeah, so the, I know that's been like a serious argument, but I think I genuinely think her character was like a huge part of the movie and like very strong and mm. meaningful. So I kind of. So yeah, that's a good point. I say no to that argument. Yeah, she was what was keeping me in it emotionally. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. And and one other thing he does well is presenting a world of violent uh, characters or criminals and. Not making you try to fall in love Empathize. with them, thank but st- God, but still make you feel compelled to yeah. watch where their yeah. story goes. That's yeah. one thing he does better mm-hmm. than pretty much anyone. Oh, yeah, so because it, yeah. it doesn't feel like it's exploiting that world or or the people affected by that world, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm 100% with you there, yeah. So, and uh, just one random one little bit of acting that I love was Robert De Niro on the phone. Where he's like mumbling, he's like like kind of stuttering yeah. and mumbling. It's amazing. Just how how he's communicating that message is such a perfect 
piece of, Second of acting. Only, we're talking about phone calls too. Oh yeah, yeah, fair. You enough. know my favorite phone call of all time. Yeah. I'm sorry. Al Pacino and Dog Day Afternoon. Oh yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, but. Yeah, I love me some Scorsese. But that's like also like my fave. I love me some Scorsese. I love me some Sidney Lumet. I just love it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I I say it from time to time when it happens, but it's still is just as genuine now. But it's just nice to see someone who's so on top of their craft make something so good. Exactly. You know, and And he really is. Yeah. So he means it with every single part of him, honestly. And I also just, and I think, I was going to say, I, I also love, but I also think it might be a reason for, I think, again, it's just like who he is and it's what makes him such a compelling artist is that he, I love that he can make this story, like a lot of his stories from people who bring it to him. Like yeah. I said, Robert De Niro brought this to him and he created this incredible thing. And I think it's because he's so open to like what matters to other people and like he works with them understands that i feel like he's just like a quiet like a i want to say a quiet ruler but like you know what i mean Mm. he just yeah uh the quiet professional in many ways our author yeah even though he's technically not but whatever yeah He's a real Beyonce. Sure. They're, they're curators. <laughs> sure. They're curators. Yeah. That's the new art tour is a curator. Yeah. Well, he's he's making a new documentary about the music scene in yeah, the 1970s. He loves to do in that. In New York. Yeah. I mean, he's done some Bob Dylan documentaries and he did The Last Waltz, right? Early on in his career as well. Right? That's the that's the one. The what? The, the, the Last, last... Waltz? Or is that the Seth that, Rogen? That ain't the movie you're thinking of. That's the Seth Rogen and Michelle Williams movie. <laughs> oh, I hated that movie. That movie sucked. Yeah. Anyways. Um, I live for Martin Scorsese. No, that is. Yeah, that is it. What? Yeah. The Last Waltz, 1978. Same title. What is it? It's a, a film account and presentation of the final concert of the band. Oh, no wonder. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways. He can do what he wants with that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything else? Solid, solid, solid. Yeah. I think I liked it more than you, but. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, and I really want to rewatch it as well. So. That's the other thing, too. Like, Loki, I could watch this so many. That's the other yeah. thing about his movies. Like, you can watch them over and over and over and over yeah. again. Yeah. Wow. Also, there are certain lines. Like, they did it again. Joe Pesci came up with, when they were fixing the the truck thing, and he's like, what's your name? And Joe Pesci says, where are you from? Improv. Yeah. Amazing. Then the scene where um, Al Pacino and, what's his name? Stephen, what's his name? Stephen Graham. Yeah. When they're, like, fighting or whatever about being late. Oh, yeah. He improvised 12 and a half. Really? Wow. And, and, and well, actually, one, one scene I loved is the prison uh, meal sequence where oh, Al Pacino yeah. and Stephen Graham are talking. That scene is amazing. Al Pacino's a powerhouse. Yeah. He's so good. Yeah. He's also just like so lovable. He's, mm. I think he's like the most lovable of this. Like, he's just, <laughs> yeah. Which I know is kind of like his deal in this movie anyway, but like, I love him. Yeah. But yeah, honestly, like, baby. Baby Pesci Yoda is <laughs> wins the movie. Baby. Yeah, wins the movie for sure. Yeah, and Robert um, De Niro, Robert De Niro holds it down. He's, oh, he's in like yeah, he, the entire movie. Yeah, he he's fantastic. Yeah, I, and I also, by the way, really admire like Scorsese is always one like his movies are his little snow globes. Like he doesn't unnecessarily intertwine. Like like Frank Sinatra did not make an appearance in this movie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I can't stand that. Crap. Unless yeah. it's the aviator, then I'm all for it. But yeah. That's because that was his world, to be fair. But you you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God, I also loved the, uh, the, um, I just love all his little touches. I don't know if I should say it or not. I don't think it matters, but. 
You can say it. The I little kinda... notes about the characters on the characters. Oh yeah, yeah, well, that, yeah. We can we can mention that. So he, I just love. I had that. forgotten that. So yeah, there. Whenever a new character comes in, or or the, the majority of the characters, there's they're a. Bare, they're not even characters. They just like talk once usually. Yeah, a little. Um, it superimposes uh, like the, when they die. Yeah, and which is such an interesting idea. I just love it. And and that's another way that makes you not feel that attached to these criminals because you're like, okay, exactly. they're going to die. I'm just going to watch and see how it plays out. Well, and it shows the juxtaposition. See, it's interesting that that makes you think that way. What it did to me was like, it shows the juxtaposition between like how they can come off. Like they come off very, like I said, like familial and everything. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which again is where like Anna Paquin sits for like the whole movie. So. Yeah. And also so many of the characters when they're presented are like at the peak of their mm -hmm. career, so to speak. And, but you're like, okay. And then they get shot eight times in the head. Yeah. So you're like, okay, this, you know, you see, you see that rise and fall yeah. almost instantaneously. Yeah. So it's, he's great. It's fantastic. Yeah. You know? And I'll see the end, the end of the movie. Is so powerful. And yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Oh, wow. The, la the last like half hour is like... Oh, yeah. I love that it's like a whole different movie. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Because it's just so it's so chilling. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow. I, yeah, I guess I am living my life, right? <laughs> sure. Great. Yeah. yeah. Am I super rich? No. Am I nice? Sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's verbatim. <laughs> so, all right, well... Uh, Catch me in the voiceover, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, out of five, Chloe... It's a four and a half for me. Uh, it's uh, it's up there for me for sure for this year. It's not my favorite of the year top, but it's up there for sure. Okay, stick with me. Oh please, I'm 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 here. <laughs> at first, like, I'm going to be honest with you. At first, I was a little offended you even asked me <laughs> <laughs> to to quantify and thereby qualify a work by. My king. Yeah, Marty. Yeah. We live for Marty. But here we are. Okay. So what I picture is like night time. Okay? Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's like late September in like the north. All right. Like northeast. Okay. Okay. So it's chilly. Yeah. Wasn't chilly very much in the day. But now? Oh, it's, it's bitter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not you, quite bitter, not quite bitter. But it's you, not in your throat, but but you need a, a long chillies. sleeved tea, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're putting you're putting the things over. You're putting the sleeves over your fingies. Yeah, for sure. Sure, right? And, and you're in and you're on a balcony, brick bal floor balcony, and it's got like um, what do you call that? Metal, you know, like a metal railing. Yeah, very thin. You got very, it. Very. Old, you know, colonial maybe. Uh huh. Whatever railing, very low. Yeah. And there's lots of white rocking chairs, and you're just sitting there, probably with you know loved ones, what have Hopefully, you. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, you're not talking though. No, you don't need to. Wow, you got it. Right. And you're just rocking, kinda. Some of you're rocking, some of you're not. But you are really just like looking ahead at the. Did I say it was over a lake? No. Okay, well it's over a. <laughs> It's over a lake. Yeah. Pond. But, you know, a pond that you would by accident refer to as a lake. Because it's like big, but it's still a pond just, you know, mm -hmm. by actual geographic standards. You feel me? Yeah. And because of the sky and the, there are stars, but not, it's foggy evening. But the moon is very there. And the color's very much dark blue, dark blue, black, right? But there's a little smidge of purple. And just hear the little plop. Little random sounds coming mm. from the, yeah, you know, and you can see a little bit of sparkle on the water, but the water and the sky look almost mirror mm -hmm. of one another, and there's something quite ominous and permanent about the evening, but mm. you're still very, at, you know, very restful mm. there. Wow. Uh, well, I mean, well, Chloe, I mean, one of the best. Maybe a frog surround. One of one of the best things is. Being so comfortable with someone where you can just sit there, not have to say a single word. Just sit there comfortably. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's why I pretend it's happening when somebody I like just doesn't want to talk to me. Right. Mm -hmm. They're just really comfortable with mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it goes. <laughs> so, all right, well, let's move on. Let's get to our retro review, which is Legend from 2015. And we have a clip for this one as oh, well. Oh, let me be the clip. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the really messed up brother. <laughs> Take a listen. <laughs> What are you doing throwing stones at the window? Uh, they're, they're, not, they're not stones. These are, uh, these are lemon sherbets. Here you go. Oh, well played. Why don't you ring the bell? Well, your mum. I mean, <clears throat> not being funny here, but the thought of your mum answering that door is a bit shocking, so... I thought she'd give me grief on account of where I've been. You mean prison? Yeah, prison. You look beautiful. You look beautiful too. I know it's a bit late, right? But I've got your Christmas present here. Do you want me to throw it up? No. Oh, you want me to deliver it? I ain't going through that door. All right. You cheeky bugger. Be careful. <laughs> a bit late now, isn't it? All right. Your flowers? Thank you. And your Christmas present. So it's like... Go and open it. If I was to show you, will you marry me? All right, so Legend <laughs> is written and directed by Brian Helgeland, and it stars Tom Hardy. What's he done? He's done quite a bit, actually. I think he just did something recently. Uh, he, he also did that Jackie Robinson docu uh, movie with Chadwick Boseman, 42. Uh -huh. He did... Oh, he's doing... He might be working on The Wild Bunch. He did... He wrote the Robin Hood screenplay <laughs> for Rid Ridley Scott. Boy. He wrote Green Zone. Huh. Uh, Some variety. Oh, he directed A Knight's Tale. <gasps> Whoa! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he wow. wrote it as well. Wow. He wrote Mystic River, okay. Man on Fire. Whoa. Yeah. He's done quite a, Dude. Quite, a, quite a lot. I feel like I'm the only person who really, really likes A Night's Tale. Everybody I talk to loves it. Everybody I talk to does not like it. Really? Please write into the film at gmail.com and tell us how yeah. you feel about A Night's Tale. Yeah. Um, we love Shannon Sossaman. So yeah. underrated. Where is she? I don't know. Where is she? I don't know. <laughs> And it, yeah, it stars Tom Hardy, Taron Egerton, Emily Browning, <laughs> and Tom Hardy. That's those are I guess Will the few Jib. big names. Yeah, Paul Anderson. There's a couple other people I feel. Like. Oh, Christopher Eccleston's in it. Yeah. Oh, Colin Morgan is in it for uh, about two seconds, but like, hey. <laughs> yeah. Um. Apparently, everyone is in love with him now and i just want y'all to know that i've been team colin morgan since merlin which was like whoa mm. that was a while ago everyone else was team no actually that's a lie i was very much actually team bradley james but like sure. we love colin morgan right we love colin morgan but now he's on the crown and he's replacing hot priest <sighs> which is like everyone loves andrew scott mm -hmm. it's like a pop culture thing henry okay you know what i'm talking about no. From Fleabag, Andrew Scott was the priest. I, I haven't watched. Fleabag. What is wrong? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. Oh, my God. Okay, I just decided. <laughs> I just decided this. I'm either going to be like Ronnie or Reggie. Like, I'm going to either go Ronnie on you or Reggie on you. Okay. Like, both are always triggered, but... Yeah. You got to pick one, one over the other. One can at least pretend. Yeah. So, yeah. So, the... Hey, I wasn't done. But now... This is... Most people actually know I'm talking about and kind of care, okay? Okay. I don't... Most people know. Okay. So, Andrew Scott was hot priest. And that was, like, from Fleabag. And that was, like, the thing. Everyone was obsessed, especially in the UK. We have, like... Film Nutter will know what I'm talking about. And we also had somebody else from the UK. Oh, yeah. So, there. Cantuna, maybe? We have at least two listeners <laughs> who know what I'm talking about. 
But he's being replaced because Colin Morgan, little baby Irish Colin Morgan, who's now a man, is now known as hot journalist from season three of The Crown. And he has replaced Hot Priest in the zeitgeist. Huh. Crazy. That's my update. Cool. Mm -hmm. So the synopsis is identical twin gangsters, Ronald and Reginald Cray, terrorized London. Oh my God, that's funny. I just realized that. that they they cray. That's yeah. what the tagline should have been. <laughs> they cray. That, that would have been funny. Terrorized London during the 1960s. Just East London. Yeah. So this one kind of came and went. Yeah. No one, I don't think I've ever met anyone who has seen it. No. So obviously it's a perfect choice for the podcast. Yeah, for sure. This is going to be a huge hit. Huge. Yeah. <laughs> I I came across I it. I had seen it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I know you had, but I think I, I saw it when it came out on like digital rent or something. I, I don't even know if it got that much of a theatrical release, really. But I actually really like it. I mean, it's it fits into a formula pretty um, consistently, but I still find it very entertaining. And Tom Hardy is amazing in both roles. And I think more so... He genuinely comes... It's like, move over, Lindsay Lohan. Right. This is the real deal. Yeah. Like, yeah. these feel like two different people. Yeah, sure. yeah, like, yeah. Really does. There was no moment where I was like, Tom, come on. Yeah. He just and, popped on some glasses mm -hmm. and did a stupid voice. Yeah. And so, yeah, he is, I mean, he, of course, carries it uh, in in both roles. And you know who really carries this movie? You know who I'm going to say. Do, Taron? Taron! Okay. Let me, wow! Let me, let, me, let me say this. This is the performance of his career so far. I, Elton who? Whomst? His laugh yeah. during the one scene might be the best piece of acting I've ever yes. seen in my whole life. Yes. It's, Honestly, he's so good in this. Yeah. When I cuz I think at the time I hadn't seen him in anything. I don't think. I don't think I'd seen Kingsman yet. Really? Yeah, I, I don't think so. But his I was like that is going to be a that star. Dude. That guy is going to be a star. He does have the thing, honestly. He does. I think so too. Yeah. Uh but yeah, he's amazing in it for the the, the little bit that he's in. And while I don't think that she's a, an amazing actress, I really do like Emily Browning in this. She I think, fits really well. I in think the she's role very charismatic in this. Yeah, yeah, I think she and she's not great in a lot of things, but I think she's no. she's quite good in this. And she and Tom Hardy have really good chemistry. Yeah, I, I would think. say so. So that yeah. and that's a and that's a really interesting dynamic between yeah. the, them. That I, yeah, trio. that's true. I usually really don't like her either, but yeah. she was she was yeah she fit in really well in this. Yeah, it was a good casting, I think. And now, I mean, as we were talking about with. Irishman, he does take a lot from Scorsese in terms of the the filmmaking yeah, style, for sure. But um, and then the, the the voiceover and all of that feels very Scorsese. Yeah. But it's it's still done pretty earnestly and done pretty well. And mm -hmm. so I, I I like it a lot. Especially but... like you know this movie's not trying to win all the Oscars. No. Like it really bothers me. I feel so bad that I keep referencing this movie. It was such a god awful movie. But um. This is like the antithesis of, or the uh, antithesis? No. I don't know. Whatever. This is like the evil twin. No. This is like the good twin. The evil twin is Hot Summer Nights. Like he stole from everyone and was like, I'm better than all of you. And mm -hmm. I'm just stealing all your stuff. This guy was like, this is the stuff. Or at least it comes off. Like this is, he was like, this is what I grew up loving. This is what I love. And Here it is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I. I agree with that. Like for, again, lack of a better word, because it's like, the movie's like hella violent. It's very violent, yeah. Like there's one, there's it's like too realistic. The stabbing. The, the st the, there's a, I when I rewatched this, it had been a while and I had forgotten that scene completely at the end. And there is a very, very violent stabbing at the end. And, and it's, it's like. I mean, now it's effective in, in terms of the, the film, but it's, it's really well done. Yeah, uh, that stuff is very jarring, and I mean it's not done as gracefully as Scorsese, but it's still effective in in the terms of the movie itself. Yeah, no, um, the, I mean it's definitely not. I mean he's not Scorsese, like it's not a Scorsese no, movie, of course, yeah. But I think it knows it. Like it's clearly much smaller scale, and I think that works for the movie's benefit. Like like these twins, these guys, like 
owned the East End and you feel very much like you're in their little space, like mm-hmm. you're in their little town. Yeah. And I mean, I think the setting, the look of East London is very good as well. My favorite aesthetic of all time, period, ever, no pun intended, I guess I said period, <laughs> is is 60s England. Yeah. So. That's good. Except for the food. That's fair. Yeah. But who cares? And, yeah. And I, I think in terms of b- borrowing from Scorsese, or, or at least similarities from To the Irishman, it does, it balances the two brothers pretty well occasionally yeah. it gets a little messy yeah, in the middle sure. and it's pretty plotless as well for and so sure. that kind of causes a little messiness as well but so I, I think that there are a few lulls as well it's maybe a little long it's and, definitely not super solid yeah i mean but it's really nice to look at and it the looks very good. good yeah you feel like you're in a little world which is nice and mm-hmm. you're happy to leave because it gets quite it's like dark, but yeah. weirdly not dark, which is weird. Yeah. But And that's what feels Scorsese as well. Yeah. It's like a dark story, but it's presented in a kind of Yeah. But definitely doesn't pull off as well. Right. Like not like nobody can though, to be right. fair. Yeah. At I'm, least not that I've seen. Yeah. And I I mean now I still I mean, I enjoy it a fair bit. It's not a masterpiece, but I do find it it's one I kinda go back to every so often just because there is something about it that's fun and just i I think it's i had never heard of the cray twins before watching oh really no and so that was you gotta watch the british drunk history about the cray twins okay it's the best okay yeah it's so good and so i think that the characters do really work in this in in many different ways and i think that it reminds me of peaky blinders as well i mean it's i mean peaky blinders is is in the tom hardy (laughs) earlier in the 20th century but um oh yeah 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 tom hardy is in that and so i yeah everything yeah i think it's just a a very palpable um interesting biopic of, of all the ones that do come out it's it's not a master masterpiece by any means but it's still kind of an interesting little colorful yeah a little addition to the genre and it's different yeah even for especially for a a biopic yeah and then also the scenes where they do use the uh they digitize the it doesn't look great i don't think it looks that bad actually no Hmm. well at least maybe at the time it it looked okay but there are are a few scenes where where the two twins are in the scene same scene together and it's tom two tom hardy's um and so obviously the Irishman does it much better, but yeah. still an ambitious choice, you know. For sure. Yeah. There's twins out there. Yeah. And so I'm Army uh, Hammer. Yeah. And so as a showcase for Tom Hardy, it's fantastic. Yeah. As a biopic, not incredible, but the Tom Hardy showcase is <laughs> on point for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I, again, Taryn Egerton. The laugh. Oh, come go, on. Go on YouTube. I'll try and find it for the clip. Oh, but please do. If I can't, you need to find a way to watch it and just watch that Honestly, one scene where he's laughing at the speech on stage. It's amazing. He's so good. Yeah. Wow. The highlight. Yeah. And what one scene I do like towards the beginning is where um, Reginald gets out of prison and he goes and proposes to yeah, it's Emily cute. Browning. Yeah, that's a really nice scene. Yeah. And so <laughs> what? We all hope for that. Right. <laughs> and get out of prison and come propose. Yeah. <laughs> that's so romantic. Yeah. So only if they got arrested for protesting the pipeline. Fair. Yeah. That would be okay. Mm-hmm. So all right, all right. Well, Anything else? Well, that was really short. Was well, that, did we talk a long time about the other one? Yeah, I know. We, I mean, we talked a little bit about it. I mean, it's similar to the Irishman. There's not a ton of standout scenes in it. The stabbing really takes over. I'm gonna be honest. The stabbing, the stabbing, and the laughing. That's all we need. <laughs> Honestly, it's got everything. Those really are the two stick out moments. Yeah, I like the thing with when they um are in their mom's um. And they're at their mom's house. Oh, that is really good. Yeah. That's good. And so there are some really good 
moving scenes in one way or the other in this movie. Yeah. Uh, and I like the way you... I don't know. I like the way, like how I felt about Al Pacino's character. I know he's a real dude. I'm sorry. I know, I know, I know. But you're like, don't quite know how to feel, like whatever. At least I didn't. <laughs> you know me. And then in this, you were like, oh, like maybe Ronnie's like, like look cute, look how nice he is. And then you're like, oh, mm. oh, oh, yeah. And and then they're like, oh no, he's not. And I'm like, oh, yeah. It, it oh. goes back and forth a lot. Yeah, which apparently is uh, very apparently is realistic. Like if you were in there, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. And they were like very good to like the community as a whole, and like people really like loved them basically, and like whatever. But like if you were not on, like if they didn't like you, like game over. Brutal. <laughs> yeah. But if they liked you, then you know. Yeah. And one scene in terms of the intimidation is the uh, psychiatrist scene where he's saying he's uh, Ronald is the most sane person he's ever seen in his whole life. And yeah. just, just that amazing uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of intimidation that they used. But, I want to be him. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a cool movie and it's not, I can see why it's, been forgotten but also yeah. i think it's it's deserving of a little yeah place you yeah. know i, I think yeah. and so and i mean and tom hardy didn't get enough credit no. at all for it so i think it should have been a musical i would have watched that heck yeah <laughs> maybe they can do they can do an adaptation of it for for uh, theater heck so yeah. i think almost anything could be a musical yeah but this would be pretty good that'd be sick be pretty good imagine those choreographed like the Come on. Oh, man. Wow. The, the Taron Egerton laughing scene would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Well, out of five, it's a light four for me. Light four. It's like, describe this, Henry. This motion. She's bobbing her head. like She's like vibing a, a good tune. You know, like. Yeah. Kind of like, like digging it. Like four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, cool. <laughs> Uh, Ralph right. Road, but in like a just like a focus, like a paying attention way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we can move on. Uh, we can get to a, a couple big controversial. Oh, I think it. So should we should we do the DiCaprio one first or the Johnny Depp one first? Yeah. Let's get my annoying one out of the way. Okay. So then we can use uh, my happy one to make me a. <laughs> yeah. So if you. Feel better. Uh, there was a recent just. Uh, a few days ago, this is a um, state of the Brazilian president has accused Leonardo DiCaprio, acclaimed actor and, of course, environmentalist, yeah, environmentalist, for funding the Amazon wildfires, and um, which, of course, is if you know anything about his activism, is absurd. Yeah, um, I mean, why wouldn't we listen to a homophobic, racist? I mean, just like the worst person in the world. Yeah. President. Yeah. And it's just, it's the most ludicrous claim. Um, yeah. It's just, it took, I mean, I'm sure the majority of people reading it are just as rolling their eyes. Yeah. That's, so those are just the dumbest thing in the world. What does that even mean? I, what does that even mean? I don't How know. How do you. F it's, it's, again, it's, it's come, I think it's coming from. You someone. can't pay fire. Yeah, it's, it's coming the dumbest thing in the world. from someone who's completely, um, not compromised not, morally. Yeah, and so I, I'm sorry that he's having to deal with any press because it's everywhere. It's I like know. it was on the front page of CNN. I, I I I'm sorry that he's having to get so much just sudden heat, but that's just no pun intended. Oh yeah, that was that was good. Um, but I, I mean, the idiot's the worst. He yeah. sucks. Like I said, he only got president because he got stabbed. Yeah. He sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most, a lot of world leaders are sucking big time right now. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm hoping that this dies down. Another pun intended. <laughs> Get it? Dies down. Fire. That was kind of mean though. Maybe it's the Amazon. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that I, I, I'm, yeah, again, I, I'm hoping that goes away soon because I, I think it's completely idiotic. Well, duh. Yeah. 
And so, and I'm, and I'm hoping that people aren't taking that as truth in terms of believe taking the side of that. Honestly, the people who will, well, no matter what. And then also, most let, people won't. Let's give it a rest in terms of people criticizing DiCaprio for using a plane to fly around to different. Um, endangered I know. environments they're like oh well he goes he gets on a plane to, to fly over there he's you know it's just so stupid like obviously he has to travel he, what, what do you want him to swim I know. a little paddle boat this ain't the beach y'all yeah like it's like, people are sh- stupid <laughs> people just wanna haters gonna hate yeah hashtag Taylor Swift don't hate on Leonardo DiCaprio yeah he's not the one saying mean things about you mm-hmm so hush the f up. I yeah. just heard that song yesterday. Yeah. Because obviously I was riding in the car with Allie and Kaylee, so I have no control. Of course. Um, Clobo salty, but are they Swifties? Eh, uh, they used to be for sure Swifties, mm. and it's since then it's it's really gone ups and downsies. Yeah. For a variety of reasons. Yeah. But um, no, I mean it's absolutely it's just ridiculous. Yeah, the whole plane thing. It's like it's not all or nothing. You do what you can, but you live in the world you you live in, and you hope to change it. But yeah, that's like the same. Pe- the people say the same thing about AOC driving in a car. <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? Yeah, that, that's all you got. Or taking a, are you? Ki- yeah, she can't help it. A holes. Yeah. So <sighs> maybe if there was a fifteen dollar minimum wage, she'd have enough money by now to have an electric car. Exactly. A holes, mm-hmm. which also wasn't ideal. We're we're working on it. Yeah. Hashtag Green New Deal. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Don't get me going, Henry. No I'm one sorry. wants to hear this, Michigan. I'm sorry. I love you, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> so Oh, and I, the other one, let's yeah, let's get to this. Let's so now, get to the how so do now, you feel about this? I don't know. How do you feel I, I about know. this? So, all right. So last, I can't believe this is real. Yeah. So last week, now I had heard about this. I could happening. sooner believe that Leonardo DiCaprio is throwing matches down into that Amazon. Yeah. So that's not true. He would never. He would never. But last week, this we, is ridiculous. We talked about, or we discussed the announcement of a Michael Jackson biopic Nobody coming wants it. coming from the Bohemian Rhapsody producer. A lot of people uh, do want it. It's a problem. He was yeah. a pedophile, just FYI, but sorry. Yeah. That's and s- But another piece of Michael Jackson uh, news here. So This is rid- ridiculous. So Johnny Depp, apparently, bless him, uh, he's... Save the good part for the end of the sentence, okay? He is on board to produce a Michael Jackson musical, <laughs> a theater production... From the perspective of his glove, <laughs> you heard me right. His glove. I keep, I keep picturing the little hamburger helper dude. Yeah. Uh, and so oh. I have no idea, Johnny Depp. You were just getting back on top. You've you've left Amber. You're just getting on back on top. Now, if this now, I'm guessing knowing Johnny Depp. And his point of view on things, I'm sure it's going to be obviously some kind of satire. satire. It has to be. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not going to be a drama, <laughs> you know, a, a heartfelt yeah. drama. And so that is comforting. Like sure. he's not saying, "Here, I, I love Michael Jackson." It's like a sausage party. Yeah, I'm deal. like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to defend him. You know, it's yeah. from the perspective of, of his glove. glove. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. It, I, I, that wouldn't be surprising. If it doesn't happen, I mean. Did you hear he's going on tour? Who would put money into that? With besides us. Johnny Depp, and he doesn't have any, so. That's true. Yeah, I'm sure he's getting royalties, but he probably doesn't have that many from pirates. I think he's getting pirates royalties. How much though? Of they, what? They made a lot of money. Yeah, but they made it, not making it. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of them being. Um, broadcast and all of that things. I'm sure being the, the, I the lead star. I guarantee he done spent his money. I guarantee you. Oh, I'm sure he has too. I'm sure he's I bet struggling. He, I so. bet he doesn't get... No. Okay, well... I mean, struggling uh, in terms of... Yeah, in terms of what he he used to have, I, I should say. Excuse me. Um, oh, I'm, 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 I'm sure uh, the Hollywood vampires are paying out really well, so... He's in another band. Is he? Touring with... Crap. Two dudes. 
That sounds like Hollywood vampires. Is it? Yeah. Are they famous? Alice Cooper and Joe Perry. Oh, that's them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're touring. Yeah. Only in the UK though. You if they go. if if they were coming to and see, I would so go see Johnny Depp shredding guitar. That'd be amazing. You should go to Europe. I I'd, I'd be down, but figure it out. Yeah. Did they do study abroad in graduate school? <laughs> uh, I don't know, uh, but. Yeah, so that'll be, I have no idea when that's supposed to be, if anyone is attached to write it or direct it or anything. I don't know. It's so... Seth Rogen in here. Yeah, it's that would be amazing. And Adam... Mc, Adam Mc, McKay? Is that his writing partner? Yeah. No, no, no. No, uh, Evan Goldberg. Evan Goldberg. Is his, uh, yeah, that, that would be good. That yeah. would be good with Johnny Depp producing. That'd be good. So keep an eye out for that one. If, if it happens, I guess I'll go s- find a way to go see it, but <laughs> <laughs> it's... It's strange. That's all you can say, really. And so. I want Ricky Gervais to have like a little um, brainstorm with them. That'd be good. And then let them do yeah. their thing. Yeah. But so. also, I just wouldn't give any. I mean, who's the audience for that? I don't know. That's another thing. Like, Nobody. who is going to put money into that? Like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, Johnny. Because people <laughs> who, for some reason, still like Michael Jackson. And think that you know, the art can be separated from the artist and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But they'll watch a whatever. Anyway. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. Time they are not going to watch it, right? And also all the people who admit the atrocities that have taken place against children aren't going to think it's very funny. Mm-hmm. Yep. So who's going to want to watch it? That's spot on Johnny Depp, honestly so that's true yeah <laughs> so we'll, we'll we'll see how that one goes we'll keep you updated so all right well i guess we can move on i can see it being an snl sketch yeah oh that'd be good maybe just do that johnny <laughs> let's just, maybe let's 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 dial it down a little bit let's just talk yeah. to snl pete davidson plays the glove yeah so everyone will have to sign an nda if they yeah. watch it yeah did you hear about that? I did, yes. A million dollars. Yeah. So I guess we can move on to uh, our listener question, which we teased Yay! at the beginning of the show. Best so best part of the show. So the Film Buds podcast at gmail.com is where you can reach us at. Also on Twitter and Facebook at Film Buds and on Instagram. If you're desperate. Yeah. And so we love hearing from people. Uh, if you're a new listener or if you've been so- listening for a while. Hey. Let us know any questions, comments, and we'll read them on the show. Concerns. Rate us if you if you can. Please. Yeah, and We've I know we've gotten some really nice ones. I know some Henry. people have. Yeah, I know some people have. So thank you for that. Thank you. They make our they make us so happy. Yeah, and so the one we have uh, this week is from Kim, who sent us a question on the the last Music Buds episode, as I, I said earlier. I can't wait. And so it came from North Dakota. No location. Did I make up shoots from North Dakota? I, I'll check in the other email, see if it's it's from that. But You won't. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to find it. <laughs> she says, hello again, Henry and Chloe. Hello. I'm glad you liked my Billie Eilish twist. Big 20 love. questions on Music Buds. But I wanted to go again for Film Buds. Hope that's okay. Yes, queen. So here's 10 questions for each of you, plus one bonus if there's time. <gasps> Some are more movie TV themed, some yeah. not. Okay. Feel free to ask each other uh, each other some of your own questions too. Okay. Thanks again for the lovely, lovely podcast. Hashtag Bud Life. Wow. <laughs> uh, and so now I, I've just pulled up the document now. It was on a, on a document, so I've not read the questions beforehand. So this okay. is all new for both of us. Great. And so I think since I have the questions for you, at first i'll go first and then chloe will will do mine and so there's okay. twin ten, 10 questions yeah for both uh and uh here we go uh-huh. settle in everybody uh-huh. settle in number one what do you do in the morning to start the day off right <laughs> kim did you not hear i'm a narcoleptic <laughs> <laughs> chloe what uh what's um, what's oh your God, routine i know what i do what's your, what, what do you do I'm dying um, to know. I turn the, the good old alarm off. 
right? Yeah. And I pet my uh, cats for a bit. I, I cuddle them because mm-hmm. they're both chilling on my bed. Are you a breakfast person? Oh, I'm like not going to sit there and like Chrissy Teigen a breakfast. No. I'm not going to gourmet it up. Yeah. I usually eat like half a protein bar. Oh, now here's a little tip. So it's a Quest bar. I go for those because they don't have anything I'm oh, allergic let's, to. Let me get into what? this. So when I was at, at your Halloween party. Yeah. Uh, Did somebody eat my Quest bar? No, 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 no. Not, <laughs> it's nothing bad. I, I was <laughs> I was in the kitchen and Chloe was off somewhere. I looked over and her entire shelf, <laughs> it looks like she's been sponsored by Quest. Like the, Hey, if you're hey, listening. Quest, sponsor us, please. I love Quest. She has like Quest. 30 boxes of quest bars it was amazing now i eat them i mean i I, sure i mean now i eat them too so i was like hey you got quest bars i didn't eat them but i mean i was more than welcome thank you it was but it was it was alarming at first like (laughs) jesus who's who's sponsored you here you know how'd you do this but if they're on sale i'm gonna (laughs) get 20 of them yeah (laughs) so that's fair so well is there anything else you have to do yeah i have a pro tip for my quest bar eating okay you gotta microwave them for a little bit. They are chewy. Makes them way better. If we <laughs> microwave them for like eight seconds. Such a difference. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'll try that. Yeah. Cool. But I also have to drink so much water with them. Oh, uh, so yeah. Sweet. They are, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I just find them more dry. That's why you microwave them. Okay. Okay. You're welcome. I'll try it out. I'll You're try it out. Everybody. I'll get Take back to Take the wrapper off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no yeah, no problem there. I got you. So that's a good one. Yeah. That's good to know, Chloe. Mostly I've always wondered. My cat thing. Yeah. Oh, also I always watch um a closer look. Okay. From the night before. Okay. As I eat my uh, quest bar. Yeah. Number two, what is your favorite episode of The Office? <gasps> <sighs> that's such a good question. Oh my god. That's such a good okay. The one that honestly comes to mind is the I can't remember what it's called and I'm sorry. The um like the um run for rabies. I oh just, fun run. The fun run. Fun run, yes. I just like love that episode. I don't yeah. know why. Mm-hmm. That's but, a very good uh, one. Basically any episode Mindy Kaling wrote, to be honest, is gonna be up there. Mm-hmm. I also at the moment love um um Evan Peters as the pizza boy. Oh yeah. That's so good. Like the drama. Yeah. Um, they're just they're all good. Basically, anytime there's a party in the office, it's yeah. the best. And I know this is crazy. I know, but I'm way more a fan of Jim and Pam pre pre love. Hmm. I mean, no, like love is there, but like they're not like pre meeting at that gas station. You feel me? Oh, that's 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 a good one. That's a good one. All right. That was a terrible answer. I'm sorry. The office deserves better, but. No, that's that's a good one. I love fun run. Oh my God. The basketball one's so good. Oh my God. Ryan started the fire. Just kidding. I take back my answer. Ryan started <laughs> the, the, fire. the fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're all so good. Yeah. Number three. What was the best compliment you've ever received? Damn. It has to be so many. Oh yeah. Totally. Oh man. It was definitely from a kid. I mean, that's obvious. Kids complimenting you is the best. Because, like, dang. Oh, no, wait, I got... Okay, I know what it was, actually. I think. There was one time... So, this little kid... So, I work at a preschool. And this was, like, the first day of me working at the preschool. It was, like... A scary day right mm-hmm. and this little it was the very end of the day like it was like time to go home and this little boy who like didn't talk during the day like at all comes up to me and he grabs my hand and he just goes you're a really nice teacher Aww. and then i said and then I walked away. so that was that was good all right well number number four what's something you learned recently that completely blew your mind <gasps> wait recently i literally went I did the mind blown thing and somebody thought I was messing with them. What was it about? Crap. 
crap. And I said, no, I would never do that to you. Because they were like, are you making fun of me? I was like, I would never make fun of you. Shoot. I'm so mad. I literally, Henry. I'm sure you did. This was like very recently. Yeah. Well, we'll th- we can come back to it. We Just gotta come back think, to think it. on it. Just think on it. We got time. We got time. Ah, I'm pissed. <laughs> I think Gemma was there. Number. All right. We'll come back to number four. Don't worry. Don't worry, everybody. Number five. What's something every man should know about Whoa. women? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Chloe, what, what should I know? Hmm. <laughs> What should every man know about women? I'm dying to know. The secrets. <laughs> Dang. Mm. What should every man know about women? Dang. These are good questions. Let's see. Okay. Dang it, Henry. Why didn't you send these to me earlier? Sorry. <laughs> I want it to be a surprise. Yeah, it's going great. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, can, I can edit this down, so you don't worry about it. No, I mean, I can't actually. What do you think it is, Henry? It'll probably give me, ins- you'll probably say something dumb. It'll give me inspiration. Uh, should know about women. I I, I don't know anything about women. So I, I, I mean, you're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> Sorry. So. Okay. I got it. Okay. Women do not need to be like saved. Like they do not need a, a a solution to their problem. They just need to be listened to. That's a good one. That's a good one. I'll try that out. I'm kidding. No, I mean I will. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, number six. Which living person is helping to keep the world going? And <gasps> hold up. Which deceased person kept it going while they were alive? We all know my answer. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. You are. Y'all know. You know what I'm going to say? No. It's not Leo. You know what I'm going to say? No. Are you kidding me? I'm having a moment. My hero? Bernie? Yeah. Doi. <laughs> <laughs> He's keeping it. Yeah, he's literally keeping the world going. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so now which deceased person helped to keep the world going while they were alive? Dang. (laughs) I mean, the world's been going for a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (sighs) Let's see. Well, I'm going to say the world probably went smoother before people were around. Mm. But, you know, what can you do? Yeah, we're not perfect. Who are some of my... Dang. Oh my god! Oh no! <laughs> that's gonna say Einstein, but that's really definitely not because you know. Mm. Mm, whoops! Right. <laughs> Let's see. I feel like it should be really obvious. I have one. I mean, it's a really. What's yours? Abraham Lincoln. Paul Newman. Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I think so. Is he Abraham Lincoln? Yeah. Why? I mean, emancipated the slaves. If you're going that route, you should at least, I don't know, Abraham Lincoln did it as a political But thing. yeah, but also, but also, I even in, but even in purely in terms of his own, his presidential persona, in terms of how he's wanting to lead the country, I think that, that Maybe. helped to keep that. Ooh, I'll go um Foundation going. I'll go FDR. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. I love me some FDR. Yeah. Uh all right, number seven. Window seat or aisle seat? Okay. This is a good question. So I'm lame, like I got bum legs, so I always go aisle seat when I can so I can stick my leg out. Right. That said. Actually, no. I'm. This is a shock. I'm an aisle seat, I would say. I feel like I'm the only one, but I don't like, you know, don't fence me in. Yeah. No, no, no. I get that. <laughs> if Chloe has to pippy, she doesn't want to have to walk over a sleepy person, yeah. sleeping person, you yeah. know? Yeah. 
Plus, Gemma really likes the window seat, and that's what I grew up with. Classic. So. Number nine. What bestseller, what bestseller book or guilty pleasure could you not help but read along with everyone else? <laughs> you know what I should say? <laughs> what, the Call Me By Your Name sequel? <laughs> I just spent way too much money on that. Yeah. I should have waited for the paperback, but did I? No. Yeah, no. Chloe dropped a 27 Lump bones. Some. Last night, no, too. I remember discount. Oh, so good. It was 25 flat. Oh, good. For like 20 pages. <laughs> yeah. Just your book. Yeah. So that, that's, well, that, that's, that's a good one. Any others over the years? Guilty pleasures I couldn't help but I read the Twilight books when I was sick. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, wow. All Man. my friends had read all of them. I said, you know what? F this. And I just said, like, I was sick, so I just read all of them in like a day. Oh, really? They're not hard to read, no. except that they're so grammatically. How did that happen? I don't know. This ain't Juno B. Jones. Yeah. Like, that's supposed to be bad, which is why I wasn't allowed to read them. But terrible. Yeah. All right, number 10. What's your favorite moment of the artistic process? Oh, my God. You're getting Fa- compliments. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, boy. Favorite moment, man. That's good. Oof. Like when you're like when you're making a painting, Chloe, or something like that. What's I understood the question. No, no, I, no. But I, I'm just I'm like, what's what's that moment where you're like, ah, I love art. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I really don't like doing hair, and I don't like doing skin. So probably like I mean that's like all I do though, because I don't do portraits, as you know. Mm-hmm. So. Like, I like doing fit. I would say, like, okay. I would say, like, the thing people tend to point out about my paintings the most are the eyes. That they're like, oh, it's so much emotion. Oh, yeah. Like, I get that a lot. Mm -hmm. And the eyes are probably my favorite thing to do. Okay. But, and then, I don't know, but I do love, I love paint. I don't know. I don't know. That's weird. I mean, it's a really good question. Honestly, my favorite part of the artistic process is thinking about how much I enjoy it, even though I really, uh, it's very, it's a stressful process sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is weird. Well, but, no, 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 that's a good one. Um, But then also my favorite part, and you can answer this one too, of filmmaking, I love me some editing. Yeah. I love editing. I do too. I do too. Yeah. Cool. Wow. What blew my mind? I said, are you making like are you making fun of me? I was like, I would never, I would never do that to you. I don't know, Chloe. It, it we we got time still. You can think on it. Who am I ever around? I don't Allie, talk Kaylee? to people. No, 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 no. No. It was somebody that I like kind of know. Was it seeing Jeremy? <laughs> 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 what, what? Dang it! All right, I gotta figure this out. All right. I have we like we might have to pause the show. I might have to call all my family members. Okay. This is gonna kill me if I don't figure it out. Also, it literally blew my mind. Mm-hmm. So it must be a fun fact. Yeah. So I can't remember the thing that blew my mind, but in its place, I'll say the th- most mind blowing thing I've ever learned in the world, which is that uh, Vera and Tafsa Formiga are siblings. Oh not. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's shocking. Oh, this is sweet. Okay, what is your favorite moment of the day? I love that. I love that. Hmm. Favorite moment of the day. Being, getting home at the end of the day, being tired from having done something during the day, like work or school. Feeling like I'm tired and I've done something productive during the day. I love that. Yeah. Um, what's the coolest punk nail polish color? A vivid, actually, what I have on, like a vivid light. What? Like a light, like like a vivid light, light blue sky. Black is tired at this point. Do something different. I like like a vivid light blue sky. Serious? Yeah. Do something different. Okay. What about the opposite sex confuses you the most? Everything. <laughs> no. Um. I can. This is one very strange yeah yeah i can watch a movie with them Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and they laugh mm-hmm. and and or cry mm-hmm. at times, and mm-hmm. then they will come out of the movie saying, "I didn't like it." That's okay. happened on multiple occasions. Like Got I've it. been in a movie with someone, they'll be like laughing hysterically, like, "Oh, that's it's so funny." Sometimes I see tears, and then I ask them what they thought of it, leave, uh, going out, and they're like, "I didn't really like it very much." That is mind blowing to me. What? I I don't get that. Really? Someone so I don't see how someone would watch a movie, laugh consistently throughout the entire thing, or react in such a way that they would be crying and then come out of the movie saying, I didn't like it. Mm. Because you are reacting in a at least I mean, maybe not crying, but if you are laughing hy- hysterically at times throughout the entire movie, that's enjoyment. I don't see what else it is. I, I don't see how you could then dislike the movie. Well, you can enjoy parts of it without... Consistently, I mean. Now, every once in a while, that's one thing. Or but elements like, of it without admiring it on a whole. Still confusing. But, I mean, like, if it's a if it's an intense reaction, that's what's... If it's every once in a while, chuckles here and there, fine. But that is off track for me. If I'm laughing hyster- <laughs> hysterically throughout the whole movie, I'm loving it. Sure. <laughs> this, you know, this is Rango. Like, you know, <laughs> so... Um, what makes your eyes roll every time you hear it? Could you make that drink extra sweet? <laughs> <laughs> That's that makes my eyes roll. Every simple time. syrup on the counter, idiot. Yeah. Or or uh, one other other thing with that. Could I have skim milk, but could you add extra vanilla? <laughs> they they want to cut down on the fat yeah. or whatever from. The milk, but then they add a sugar. few more ounces of intense sugary syrup. Yeah, you're not helping yourself. That's a twist. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. Um, what book helped shape you? Hmm, that's a good question. Everybody poops. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, it sounds pretentious, but honestly, it's kind of the one that sticks with me. The Great Gatsby, I would say. That really makes sense for you, honestly. Yeah, I, I read it when I was young, and it, and it, it's stuck with me. So, what seemingly innocent question makes you think it's a trap every time? Or it doesn't say that. I was about to add that. It's a trap. <laughs> what are you doing tomorrow? Because <laughs> <laughs> then I'm under pressure. That's good. That's a really good answer, actually. Mm. Um, what skill do you wish you were better at? He's perfect, apparently. Nothing. <laughs> uh, maybe acting. I know. I mean, I mean, not even in terms of us. Somebody's calling me. In terms of a cinematic way. Just, I don't know. I, I'm not very <laughs> emoting. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a very good. Uh, not a very good liar. But I guess that's a good oh, thing. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I'm, so not that I, sh- I want to lie. That's not. But I can't even get away with some of the, the easiest. What are you one. doing tomorrow? Yeah. Nothing. Dang. <laughs> uh, so I would say that. Mm-hmm. What's the last emoji you remember using? I used the. Uh, the. What do you call the guards at the at Buckingham Palace? Palace guards. But there's a name for them. With the tall black. Are they not called palace guards? I don't think so. I don't um, know. Flapjacks? Whatever. <laughs> I used the flapjack emoji. No. <laughs> That's um, the last emoji you used? I used that one very recently. And I was describing North Carolina. I don't know how that worked out, but. I used the uh, I used the the Buckingham Palace. I just did a gym look at the camera. Yeah, the, I used the Buckingham Palace guard uh, most recently. I think it's bizarre. Yeah, I I don't know why I did it. I used to the cat with the hard eyes. Nice, as I usually do. Nice. Um. <laughs> What's the most emotional movie scene that you've ever watched? Dang, I'm glad I didn't get that question. We'd be here all night, folks. Hmm. There are so many. The one that the one that immediately comes to mind 
and I, I think I've talked about it on the sh- show before. Giovanni Ribisi in Saving Private Ryan mm. talking about the story about his mother and him pretending to be asleep when he was a kid. That's a solid answer. Mm. <laughs> That's a good one. Watch that scene on YouTube. Or just watch the whole movie. Yeah, I would, yeah. Yeah, but I would go for the whole movie. Yeah. Is, yeah. Um what are the last things you do before you go to bed? Hmm. <laughs> Should I have some like romantic jazz playing? You know, like my nightly routine here? No, please. <laughs> um, I might have to add that in. <laughs> um, well, I usually will browse Spotify for about thirty or forty-five minutes. What? Yeah, I'm I, I I'm just constantly trying to find new music, and so I browse Spotify for a while and just. Listen to different songs, different artists. Henri. Um, sometimes listen to. I mean, not for that length of time every single night. It just depends. But I mean, that kind of process, one way or the other. Sometimes watch interviews of some kind with people. Uh, I was watching. Letterman. No, <laughs> the Chuck Depp Letterman <laughs> interviews. You gotta watch them if you haven't. The Michael Jackson thing solidifies this. You gotta watch it. The guy's a jokester. Uh, <laughs> No, but yeah, I, I like watching interviews with either actors or musicians. So, but I like to just browse Spotify for a while and find stuff. So, what do you do when you find it? I listen. Like if you finally find a good song, then you're like, perfect. And you shut your computer and go to sleep. <laughs> no, I mean, I'll just, I mean, just, I'll just listen to like a song here, a song there of different, like, like new songs. Like I'll just go through the new releases and just listen to a lot of different things. So, mm. Bonus. This is for both of us All right. now. Yeah, and I think it's. I think she said it's the same. It's the same question for both of us. So I just said that, Henry. Did you? I said it's for both of us. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. In one word for each, what is music to you, and what are movies to you? Dang. Hmm. Movies. Emotion. And music, freedom, I think. Mm. I would say music, release. That's a good one. That would be my second choice for me, yeah. And movies, like comfort. Yeah, that's another good answer. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Dang, I really wish I knew what blew my mind. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pissed. Well, I, I think that... The Vera Farmiga thing is still it's it's shocking. It still resonates pretty <laughs> pretty hef- pretty deeply. So, um, so yeah. Well, thank you so much for the the questions, Kim. Thank Very you. nice of you to take the time. We love it. Yeah. I mean, that's I mean, it means a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thank you again for that. And uh, feel, again, feel free to send us any questions or comments, mm-hmm. and all of those links and and um, everything is in the show notes. So check that out. Mm -hmm. so all right well i guess we can end off with our picks of the week chloe should i go you want to go you can start well i've been uh watching a handful of things on disney plus and i've been going back to some of the really early classic disney movies Mm -hmm. and so i rewatched peter pan from 1953, mm. which I hadn't seen since I was a kid. How many awkward moments were there? Ooh, this movie is brutal. <laughs> uh, so now, certain parts of the movie are fine. Still look great. Not the mermaids. <laughs> no. <laughs> Still look great, very charming. But wow, is the Native American <gasps> representation racist. Ooh, it's bad. It was painful. Very painful. Happy to Thanksgiving. Work. Yeah. it was. So that part is horrible. Uh, and so, and that really hurts the movie. G- gotta say it <laughs> tinkerbell is great but you know uh that stuff is is pretty darn racist and so not by far my least favorite of the the classics that i've i've seen yeah um and then also especially for the time i guess it was 53 it the pacing is super quick like we were looking at two to three second cuts chloe rather than Whoa. maybe the, the six seven eight second ouchie to my eyes yeah and so it was very 
just bombastic and incoherent and just kind of shocking for the time. It's like when a kid is having a sugar rush, you just kind of have to like sit there and you gotta watch go with, with it. eyes open. You got to yeah. go with it, yeah. Then I rewatched Alice in Wonderland, which came out <gasps> two years before that. Beautiful. Yeah, which I liked. And now look, I don't, I don't participate in drug use, but this the visuals in this movie are so psychedelic that this would be the movie to I don't to participate to, in drug use. Yeah, but this is the movie that I would would be good to do drugs to. Like it, the visuals are especially again similar to Peter Pan for the time are so crazy. And yeah. like and also there's a scene that's pretty disturbing honestly where they're painting the roses red and they're just carrying carrying around buckets of red paint. And it, and it looks like blood is flying. I've everywhere. never thought it looked like blood in my life. Really? Like Alice like Alice is being covered in little red specks. No. It Henry, I watched that movie on the reg. I've never thought that. Do you? A little secret there. Wow. <laughs> that is like that's honestly like the one Disney movie I really? I genuinely Well that, enjoy. that's what I immediately thought Not of. Maybe. On the reg. I would say I watch it like once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. But for me in Disney movies, that's very much on the reg. Yeah. So, but I mean, I mean, that's what I thought of immediately, but it's, I mean, it's, I, I liked it a fair bit. It's my favorite scene is when she's stepping on the, like she's lost and she's crying and stuff and she's stepping on the like little light up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Tut. Yeah. Oh. And it is incredibly plotless and narrative list. Like it's just all over the place. Sure, and it's, it, and so it does get, not that that's, and I mean, that's what I like mostly, but I think it does get so off the beaten path that I kind of tend to lose focus as to where I am, what's going on. And so That's I think, the idea. yeah. Oh, which I mean, I, I get, but even just from a, a viewing standpoint, I do kind of like phase out sometimes, but um, I definitely prefer that over, the, over Peter Pan. I was so obsessed with Alice Wonderland when I was little. Yeah. So obsessed. Like and, I've seen, I'm not kidding you. I've seen every version of Alice in Wonderland there is. I don't there's some it. freaky deaky ones. I'm there's sure. some really good ones. There's one oh, shoot. I don't I've talked about it here before, so whatever. There's one really good one. It's hmm. British. It's got turtle soup in it. It's got all the things. It's really good. Right on. Uh <laughs> and one thing I will say in in comparing it to the Tim Burton one, I think the best scene in both, my favorite scene is the the uh uh brunch uh scene at the the tea party with the long oh. table i think that's the best scene in both versions so and i'm not i think it's again i think it's just the weird characters uh going back and forth with each other but i i loved both scenes or both versions uh, of that scene and then i rewatched the little mermaid which i hadn't seen since i don't know if i had ever seen the whole thing i don't know but I think this was by far my favorite of the ones I had watched recently. Kaylee's favorite Disney princess growing up was Vanessa. Mm. Makes sense. <laughs> um, and it's yeah, it's just beautifully rude. No, I mean it's just just <laughs> beautifully told and in, in so many different ways. Looks incredible. Um, and it's yeah, it's and I'm curious as to how the live action movie is going to be. It's Rob Marshall. A little, a little. Is it? It is, yes. Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, we talked about Into the Woods recently. Tremblay's in it though, so. Oh, is he? Oh, cool. He's Flounder. Yeah. And so that one, I, I was surprised as to how much I liked that one actually. And just very engaging and just. Did you watch the sequel? No, I have not. It's great. Really? And then I did re-watch the first two episodes of The Mandalorian as well which is the the is disney rewatched it no watched it oh. the first time yeah. <laughs> better they okay uh which is the the Taking new disney steady. plus star wars series and what's it's, it about so it's about boba fett who is the the like ambiguous bounty hunter character and anti-hero is he a person yeah yeah he's a person and is he famous no who is he just some dude yeah yeah i mean he he's in the previous films like he's been like he's not just some new character and this the story or the the series is created by john favreau who's done who directed okay. the lion king remake and iron man elf you know all those classics and it's it's very simple which i liked about it i was a little worried when it started off it was a little goofy but it's a very 
um, subdued, um, almost like Western style Star Wars series. And so I, I liked it a fair bit and I was hating uh, on Baby Yoda before I actually saw this the show just because it was everywhere. Every meme. Oh, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. all right, this can't be that good. I got to say, it's pretty darn good. When he when he comes in, you're like, I'm I'm. This is the best. Are there other Yodas? No, not that I know of. Like parents, he's just a baby. Uh, he's just a baby. <laughs> it's just him. He, Did he talk? Not not yet. I don't know. I, I want to know who. Ta- I just basically I want there to be other Yoda species, and they all just speak normally. Mm-hmm. And I want someone to have taught Yoda to speak in in that strange verbiage. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I don't want to presume anything. I don't know what they have yeah. in store for us. But it's a. I mean, it, it looks very good. The score is very good, and it's. Um, oh, Jesus! You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Chloe just. Uh, <laughs> you're right. The the I think the chair just. Uh, I was. <laughs> I was screwing with the. That was funny. Yeah, Chloe just went down a peg. I was. <laughs> on the chair. My legs were, crossed, and oh. I was scooching a back and a forthed. And it managed to coincide such that I hit the little uh, mechanism and plopped myself Butter down. Fingers. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's 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 got an interesting tone. It rides a very fine line between becoming too campy while at the t- same time taking itself seriously. But yeah. it, it does it pretty well. It's very close to going off the deep end. Is it new stories every episode? Yeah. And, and it's I guess they release an episode every week. Ah, yeah. I think there's four now that are out. I've only watched two though. So I'd rather just rewatch Firefly. Mm-hmm. But I was, I mean, I was surprised. I think it's it's not the best thing they've they've ever done. Like I think some people are saying, but it's it's pretty good for what it is. And all, all the episodes are about thirty or thirty five minutes, so it's not like hour long episodes like we were talking about last week. So, and then I did watch the new Netflix animated movie Klaus. Which is the this? Why? I like anime. I like I like indie animation, and it has Jason Schwartzman. Schwartzman. Uh, what? Yeah, Rash- Rashida Jones. What? J.K. Simmons. They got all these Jews in this Christmas movie. Mm. Typical. Yeah, J.K. Simmons. Come on, y'all. And this is about how the uh, the letter writing to Santa was founded, and it's this guy sent up to the North Pole to establish this postal service, and it's. Not it's not bad. It's pr- similar to Peter Pan. The pacing is totally so- racist. <laughs> yeah, it's so racist. This movie. No, it's um, it's very frantically paced. Oh. And the the animation is. I mean, it's it's digital animation. It's interesting at times, but I feel like they almost overdid it to where I was not noticing any differences. It was just so filled with. Oh, D- different see. visuals and colors yeah. that it just started to become monotonous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but it, it's, it's fun. There's a few too many of what I call accident montages of where a character is just like in a situation where uh, he's being like hurled across a room and it's just repeating yeah. that kind of um, concept for comedic purposes. There's way too much of that in this movie mm-hmm. of uh, Schwartzman being flung around, but it's, it passes the time. It's not overly long. And I mean, I, I like indie animation, as I said, and so it's it's okay, but um, by no means a, a groundbreaking film. That might be about it for me, Chloe. Dang it. Yeah. I well. Think. Oh, and I, I did buy the 47 meters down uncaged Blu-ray. I have not. I, I, Henry. I, have it, I have it ready to go. I have not watched it. I liked it when I saw it in the theater, but I have not. Uh, you thought it was okay. You didn't even like it. I gave it three out of five. You know? No, Henry. Yeah. And I mean, I, I like shark movies, so I'll watch even crappy ones. So, so rave of you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I finished. Yeah. Um, I watched that show with Kat Dennings and Brenda Song. and Dollface? Thank you. Yeah. Watched, I finished Dollface. Solid. Yeah, I'm curious about it. I'm a big fan, mm-hmm. even though Cat Dennings, you know, annoying. Yeah, but hey, I'm a big fan of the show. Okay, great show. So, so 
interestingly done, like very fun. You know, I love me some magical realism. Mm -hmm. It's got that written all over it. Yeah. But still very like millennial and yeah. Should I say fun again? Fun. Why not? Um, yeah, be fun. Um, I watched still on that good doctor. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> It's a staple in the Strauss house. It's good. Uh huh. Uh, he's so underrated. Okay. I know. He's criminally underrated. <laughs> he. I'll I'll try watching it and I'll and I'll you know I'll check it out. You for I watch it and I'm like I gotta like slap myself. I gotta be like Chloe. Do you realize how good Freddie Highmore is? And I'm like, he's so good, girl. I forgot. <laughs> like he's that good. Yeah. Oh, I rewatched. Uh... Oh, I watched a couple episodes of Friday Night Dinner, which is like, we love that show. Whenever we stay or whenever we do Shabbat dinner, like at at my hacienda, we tend to watch. So like Gemma and Sam came over, mm -hmm. and my dad came over, and what are we gonna do? Watch the best show of all time, Friday Night Dinner. Mm -hmm. Which you don't have to be a Jew to like it, but I mean, helps maybe a little bit. But no, it's you should please watch it, Henry. Okay, it's the funny. Honestly, it's so good. Okay, it's hilarious. You should see Papa Strauss watching it. It was the best thing ever. <laughs> Gemma and I were just staring. Like I've seen each episode, <sighs> probably f at least four times each. Yeah, like it's so well written. Like it's so good. Uh, Papa Strauss lost his um, he was loving it he didn't know what to do with himself he thought it was so funny wow yeah it's the it's so funny all right i'll check it out please do it's on hulu yeah basically everything i recommend will be on hulu yeah netflix is sleepy yeah all right well that that might about do it i think yeah uh unfortunately shoot yeah <laughs> So, yeah, uh, so next week on the show, Chloe, you know, and I was, I was, I told Clo Chloe I some, uh, so next week on the show, we'll be doing Queen and Slim, Come on. which is the new Daniel Kaluuya, uh, Bonnie and Clyde-esque uh, romance crime Social, story. Social, uh-huh, commentary. Yeah. So, and... That one, which is in theaters now, and so we'll be doing Heck, that, and yeah. probably some other, maybe a retro re Isn't review. Isn't there another thing in theaters that I was like, please? Oh. Uh, I mean, I'm going to see it, so if you see it, we can do it. Knives Out? Yeah. Yeah, sure. We'll see. Yeah, so we'll see yeah, may time. maybe Knives Out just depends on the schedule, all that my stuff. My mommy wants to see it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so does my mom. Oh, my God. The four of us should go. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Not that, not that it would be bad. No, but how could it be? Yeah. So, but no, uh, Queen and Slim for sure. Oh yeah. And we'll figure out the, the second movie uh, down the road. And so, yeah, check out the. Uh, stay tuned for Music Buds coming soon, episode five, I guess it is. And yeah, don't forget about the Kristen Stewart bonus show. It was a wonderful time. Thank, thank Jacob by donating and, thank and Jacob. Da downloading. Yeah. And well, Chloe. I mean, as always, it's... Did you uh, tell Jacob I missed him? I did. You did? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. He probably just went, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Classic boy. Yeah. That's another thing. If you get complimented... Say thank you. No, honestly, even if you don't mean it, just think of an effing compliment back. It's just general etiquette. Mm. Okay? It's the worst I try. If someone gives me a compliment, Chloe. No, you do. I didn't mean you. No, no, I know. But I mean, even I at, at times am at fault. So no. I, it's good advice. I was going to say you're a good boy, but that makes you sound like a pet. Yeah. You're 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 good for a boy. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Chloe, thank, <laughs> uh, thank, thanks again for the invite last night. Nice to go out and have dinner. <laughs> 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 Jeez, Henry. Just a, just, just a wild time. It actually it means a lot to me that you uh you you made the gamble to socialize. Yeah. And go out in public. Okay, okay, well we should say 
I'm not against going out in public. <laughs> I mean, I, can't, I mean, it's just... I know you get tired of the paps. The paps? It's like paparazzi. <laughs> oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, so... But no, I, I had I had a lot of fun. It was nice. How could you not? Yeah, it's with uh, the big three. So... <laughs> the big three. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, well, we hope you enjoyed it just as much as we did. Or maybe a little more. Yeah, maybe a little more. Or less would still be good. Yeah. And we'll see you next time.